No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and today we're officially in here with my man House Phone and one of our favorite YouTubers coming to us straight from merry old England, it's Trap Lord Ross. How are you guys doing, man? What's popping over there? I mean, it's great. We're just uh, doing a couple of interviews today, doing the No Jumper show live at 6 every Tuesday. Um, you know, just Absolutely. hanging out. Absolutely, Absolutely not social distancing that's what's happening yeah not really social distancing so much are you in an extreme uh, state of quarantine as we speak yeah man the uk uk is like full lockdown the whole mm. country's locked down so you're allowed out once like once a day for exercise and then you're allowed to go to the store but like it's kind of tight over here like it's they've, they've locked it down real hard i hear over over there you guys it's a bit more like relaxed and shit but yeah man like well new york be going out here new york is like under the most unbelievable amount of lockdown i'm pretty sure but like out here you know everything's so spread apart that it's like no the cops aren't going to stop you from just like driving to mcdonald's yeah, going right. for yeah. a walk etc because it's so spread out but if you're in new york it's like if even like one percent of the people that live on any given mm -hmm. block in london or in new york were to decide to start walking around that one percent is going to make it mm -hmm. crowded as fuck so it's sure. understandable i guess yeah Bro, that's life life in the police state now, man. Ain't Living that in that police truth. state, baby. I yeah. was gonna say how how are they keeping tabs of you guys of like who like you know, are they just stopping you, stop and frisk? Like what are they doing? Yeah, there's there's like a few stops and uh literally like where I live, like out the window, like at night you just see like cop cars just driving back and forth patrolling. Uh I live wow. I, I live like there's kind of like a, a what would usually be like a busy sort of walkway where mm -hmm. I'm at and like there's like two cops that are just walking on the beat up and down there which is like pretty unusual for where I'm at so it's crazy man it's fucked up but do, do you ever just what leave you your man? house and there's like a rapper wearing a mask filming a video <laughs> with like 30 <laughs> goons with knives out on the corner is that ever happened in your neck of the woods yeah where I used to live right I used to live in a block that's a bit of a I won't say which block but like it's sort of it's it's in a, it's been in a few drill videos right oh it's really like a, okay it's, it's, popping, it's a it's bit popping. of a drill block so like there's been one or two nights when i've been like woken up at night and just like the drillers are just out there bally's on filming some shit and i'm just watching from my window like i'm trying to sleep but it's lit, it's lit. <laughs> that's uh, hilarious yo what what was the thing that really sort of sparked your interest in hip-hop like like i'm assuming you were just a fan of the music for a long time but then what what mm -hmm. sort of made it so that you were so seriously into it that you decided you wanted to start uh making youtube content about it yeah, bro. It's like it's a long story, but we're on the No Jumper show, so I'm we got go. plenty of time, it, and know? we're yeah. under quarantine. Yeah, let's go. Come on, let's let's fuck all else to do, man. So uh, yeah, bro. Like basically, I've just I, I've pretty much never listened to anything other than rap, like straight up, like nothing else. Um, Same. Since I was literally since I was literally like five, uh, I got like two older brothers, and like way, way, way back, they were like trying to make it as like rapper producer types. Like mm. they're like ten years older than me. So I was literally just since I was a kid, it was just hip hop nonstop. So like I'd never even listened to other genres of music. Damn. And then when I grow up, like someone would throw on some music that's not hip hop. And I'd just be like, what the fuck is this shit? <laughs> I mean, that was sort of like my experience, except I found out about Green Day in 1994. So I always had like a soft spot for some rock music. But then how to old were totally you honest. in 1994, though? I think I was in you're fourth like a, grade. So yeah, was, so you're like a kid. So. Yeah, but I mean, like. If I hadn't found Green Day, I highly I think there's a very good chance that I would have probably never really gotten that interested in like any popular rock music. What's like the popular music in the UK? Like you weren't like it was always it was hip hop like on the radio and shit. No, no, like back in the day it was just like it was just like American pop. Like just when I was growing up, pop. type of sh type of shit be on the radio just like Britney Spears and shit. I mean, we've got a, like there's like UK pop packs that obviously like never made it over there, but like mm. we had some we had some bullshit on the radio, but like uh hip hop thing is like hip hop changed a lot in the UK like over mm. the time that I was into it. So like literally since I was like five or six, I was like hiding copies of like fucking Marshall Mathers LP under my bed mm. and shit, like getting in trouble with my parents for like listening to Eminem, but were you not e even understanding what the fuck he's talking about. Right. W like, were you even thinking about UK rap at that point or was it all American shit early no, on? No, no, I was into a lot a lot of early UK rap, like a lot of like what would probably now be considered like pretty underground UK hip hop shit, like uh, like Skinny Man, or, like mm. Rodney P and Jest, uh, stuff like that, like Mark B and Blade. Anyone that even knows any of these names is probably I was like, it right yeah. now. No, I oh, had yeah, a, right. I had a Dizzy Rascal, uh, I had some Dizzy awesome. Rascal MP3s, and uh, I almost the, said Dizzy the streets. Right. The streets. I was fucking yeah. The streets. 
Yeah, the streets are solid, man. It's like the streets and Dizzy Rascal. That's like the first era of like rap in the UK getting mainstream. I, mm. I would say like the mainstream recognition it deserved. Yeah. We had like So Solid crew, if you know about them. Mm. Had like So Solid, uh, like end dubs and shit. But yeah, it was like di- like Dizzy Rascal when he had his album because he was like sixteen when that dropped, I think. Right. But that first album, Boy in the Corner, uh, he had like Fix Up, Look Sharp, and just same with the streets. Like they blew up, and that kind of like made rap like uk rap acceptable yeah but like before that the artists that were popping in uk rap like the types of people that like my brothers would be looking up to mm. you know they're, they're people that are like still around but they never really got like the shine or love that they deserved because it was like yeah. the uk scene was just like mm. a little seed back then you know what i mean when those people wait were is that and they were like is that how you started making your like signature like in video rap songs because your brother was a producer and rapper so I, you're yeah like, were you making music <laughs> you're making on a more sincere level earlier yeah 100 percent, bro that all right, all right that that's gonna lead into the next part of the story so right. on my channel uh you might not have seen it because it didn't get pushed too hard but like when i hit like 100k subs i uploaded this video and it's like the earliest example of me rapping and it's from me when i was nine years old oh um, damn i did not in, see that in so I'm nine years old in like the third grade year three what we would have had in the uk and uh but so basically, like me and my me and my my little gang in fucking in third <laughs> grade, we were like, we're gonna start a rap crew. So we started a group called the called the Toxic Crew. Uh, there was like five I, five I or I, six of us. I remember you saying you something about like the Toxic Crew. Yeah, yeah. I, I reference it every now and then, but I put the whole track up. We, so we made a track called Ghosts and Ghouls, and we were like, we're gonna shut down the the Halloween disco with this track. <laughs> so oh, we shit. like made this song. Like my my older brother uh, like helped us put it together because we were whack like we couldn't even we were like nine years old we couldn't even rap on beat and he was like piecing together every line mm. like putting it on on beat in the timeline so we sounded lit Damn. and um so we were like we were popping um the toxic crew so i would have been like nine then well, and it, it, okay and it kept going from there though you weren't done at age nine you kept you kept trying for a while well when i was like 10 i tried to drop the there's a, this is a, a good story. Like I basically tried to follow up that shit solo because I couldn't really get the band together. Like a, a lot of the bands, like Toxic Crew band practice was like some after school shit. But then I think like the swimming club opened and people were like, nah, I'm trying to be like in the swimming club rather than being a rapper. They're like, yo, fuck all that. I can't have all these Caucasian men attacking me with their words while I'm trying to get my <laughs> fucking doggy paddle on. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So basically like at that point, the Toxic Crew kind of disbanded and I had to go solo. So I tried to drop like a few little projects. I did like, you know, I'd, I literally I'd have been like under fucking 14. But I How did many... like the fucking school music project. And I did like, uh, you know, I was making like rap songs from my like school music GCSE and shit. Mm. But it was all whack. It was terrible. It's embarrassing. <laughs> but I was trying. I thought I was going to make it, man. That's fire. Yo, but did you uh, so did you have aspirations? Did you start to think to yourself like shit? Well, maybe I'm not going to be a rapper, but there's Tim Westwood and there's like mm. other <laughs> roles that seem like white people are doing a good job of uh, filling those roles in hip hop. Maybe not always as the rapper. Did you start to think like, Oh, maybe I could be a producer. Maybe I could be a voice uh, outside of the actual art. It kind of happened like randomly. So basically like I kept, I kept on going with just making shit on my own. Um, and then when I was probably like, a bit later on in like university, probably like 18, 19, I was like, right, I'm really going to give this rap shit a go. I'm going to like, like, knuckle down. I'm going to make an album. I'm going to get get it popping. And so I made my album. Like I put out a few music videos and shit. And I thought they were cool, but obviously like shit just flopped. Like obviously no one cared. And it was mm. whack. It was no good. So I basically off the back of that, I actually wanted to get into like video production. So I started making videos for rappers. It was kind of more like if I can't rap, I'm going to shoot the videos for rappers. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I, I basically just like was shooting music videos for like local local acts, like just rap- rappers from my area or like rappers that I knew and that. So I was doing that for a minute, but again, it kind of like didn't really get popping. I wasn't really making too much money. Like the 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 struggling rapper music video budget is probably yeah. the worst budget you're gonna get. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> That's a fact. But I mean, you know, there's a lot of people who have sort of sparked their career from there, even though you discover pretty quickly that doing music videos for people with nothing going on is a pretty unsatisfactory yeah. way of life. Yeah, bro. I tell you what, I've really got like I've got so much respect for people like Cole Bennett, who have like I mean, obviously the guy's fucking huge, but like the way he kind of took yeah, making yeah. interesting original videos for rappers and then like basically built it as a whole brand around himself. Oh, yeah, so fucking sure, genius. Dude. Yeah, it's so um, crazy how kids can like watch 
the, the, the progression. progress of his music videos. Like, mm -hmm. if you really go back and watch mm -hmm. those Dex and Pump ones, it's like, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think they were even by the same person. But if you watch all his videos in a row, you just yeah. see the quality slowly go up. And I think that's like, I mean, I, sometimes I wonder of his like 12 million subscribers, how, how many, many of them, of them are even back. in touch with like the, the, the progression shit. of the channel. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. I mean, but he Not like tightly. they were even putting up numbers even in like, you know, 2016 and shit. But yeah, I mean, I, I interviewed him when yeah. he had so few like really big videos and then they were just really good though. Yeah. Thing, how much you know? it's blown up since then is like unbelievable. Yeah, man. Shout out to them. Yeah. You got, you have yeah. any videos like what, like what was the, what was the, the or, most yeah, views how did you, you start? Got? Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so basically, right. I was making those rap videos. Uh, like none of those ever really blew up. Like, uh, I'm trying to think if any of them even like got that big, but like, not really, man. Like all probably yeah. people you you'd have never heard of. Well. Like not in like a this way, but just like UK yeah. acts. Some people. I mean, I did videos for people that aren't even rapping anymore. So anyway, mm. like that kind of fell by the wayside. But like through that, I got into like corporate video production, and I was just like shooting videos for like okay money for like companies and like businesses and shit. Mm -hmm. um, and then like on the side, I just was fucking into YouTube, like really into YouTube. Loved YouTube, YouTubers. Um, and I just started making like shitty YouTube content. I was mostly inspired by, do you know, H3 Productions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So like I was mostly inspired by him at the start and I was doing like reaction videos and like sketches and shit. Uh, oh. Not necessarily all rap, but like a lot of rap stuff. So it's like I did one where I do like a reaction video to like the new Skepta video. Mm -hmm. I do like a spoof. I, I do like a little fake short of like me trying to become a rapper. Just hey, like fucking around stuff. Let me ask you this. Like I've, I'm aware of a lot of the reaction channels. I think some of them are yeah. pretty good. A lot of them do crazy number of views. Crazy but numbers, I mean, yeah. a lot of it is really like as content. There's not a lot going on. It's a lot of just like, whoa, yeah. oh, like, like just reacting, but not a lot. There's not a lot to it. I feel yeah. like that, that art form of the reaction video is something that has a lot of room to grow. I, I agree with you, bro. I agree with you. And to be honest, like at that stage in what I was doing, like I really just I was just trying to come up with something and experiment with stuff. But yeah. like I, I feel like I totally agree with what you're saying about reaction videos. Like as a genre, it's like early days. But at mm. the same time, like jumping in and just being like, I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm just going to do some reactions. Like I learned so much from that experience because mm. yeah. it was like. It's a very basic type of like filmmaking performance, putting yourself on camera out there like that, and yeah. um, it was just super helpful experience. I mean, if 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 you went back and watched any of those reactions that I did, you know, you, I guess like me as like a performer or like an on screen presence, you can tell that I'm fucking like nervous. Mm, I don't yeah. really know what to say. I don't know where to look. So like going through and making all of those shitty reaction videos was like the perfect audition to like what I'm doing now. Yeah, so that, like that's one thing that you can always count on for like if you're a young person who wants to get into YouTube is that you look at uh Trap Lore Ross, Keemstar, me, H3, whoever, and you're like, damn, like they seem so comfortable on camera. How yeah. do I get like that? But the thing is, like I went back on Drama Alert, I watched Keemstar's oldest videos, and it's not like he's horrible on camera, but yeah. he's like infinitely better now. And you could pretty much say that about Anybody, anybody like you know. it's really when it comes to being comfortable talking on camera on youtube it's just about doing it over and over and over until you slowly dust off all the cobwebs you know you get into the zone you start to be able to actually be yourself on camera and even for somebody like me who's been doing this for years and years i'm still trying to be more of myself or be better on camera be yeah. more natural be more like what i'm like when i'm just sitting there having a conversation when it's on camera it's yeah. it's always going to be a challenge for anybody but did you uh, go through any specific changes that helped you to get that comfortable on camera or were there any particular breakthroughs yeah bro definitely definitely um uh, exactly what you describe is exactly what i did it's funny like literally Actually, as soon as I would find a channel I really admired, like first thing I would do is I would just go, what's the first thing they made? Mm. Like, what's the earliest thing? What did their shit look like when they were at my level? And I used to find that so, so comforting. Mm. But as far as like a specific thing that I did that helped me, I guess, I guess it was like a combination of just like, I was just, I would always try and like put myself in positions where I could perform, mm. like, uh, you know, coming up with like a different kind of sketch that was like a bit more complicated or like outside of my comfort zone. And for a period when I was trying to sort of make it in the reaction sketch comedy YouTube bit, like I started doing stand up comedy as well, just mm. like in the London, like stand up comedy circuit, open mic type shit. And like, 
it's a pretty brutal, grueling, like fucking unforgiving world going into standing up stand up comedy. Oh, really? But like going out on going out on a stand up open mic stage and just like fucking dying in front of like twenty people <laughs> is yeah. probably like the the best fucking confidence builder that you could get for doing shit like this because like compared to that this is fucking nothing definitely Did or, you, or oh. just like being humiliated in, in a in any type of public forum mm. you know yeah for sure like once you've done a few bad rap shows like house phone oh, yeah. has definitely done some some <laughs> very good shows and has also done some very bad shows but oh, i feel man. like the really bad shows are gonna really get you into the zone yeah. once you get the good that, ones that also like <laughs> test your character because like you know, it takes a fighter to really go out there mm. and nobody is looking forward to seeing you. Oh, like one, one time me and him did a show and well, we, we were interviewing this guy. I don't know, Jeffrey. And this girl texted me in the middle of us doing the interview and was like, hey, there's a show with uh, Jeffrey and Chief Keith. Do you want to open up? And I'm like, do I want to open up for Chief Keith? Hell yeah. <laughs> so we fucking yeah. go down to the observatory last minute. Um, and chief keith crowds are fucking insane i remember like, this yes they, they are just not trying to hear nothing they don't give a fuck about because like the other guy was on the bill and i was just like an added on last minute headliner i mean uh opener so they were just so there to see chief keith they didn't give a fuck about anybody's existence mm -hmm. like they damn near <laughs> almost booed me off stage and i uh i jumped i got on top of the speaker to like amp everybody up and i fucking stage dove I landed on this oh, no. kid. I landed on this kid with the mic and like split his forehead. He had like steel toe oh, boots fuck. on. You had you had nah, the I worst had, shoes. I had, Jordan, <laughs> I had Jordan ones on. So when I landed, I kicked one dude in the face, and then the other dude hit the mic. Hit him because I jumped Ooh. off like a really, really tall speaker, and like they were like not hyped. So yeah, my memory of that show is that there was like. Eight dudes in the front row just looking mad as they all fuck. had glow gang shirts on. They were just not oh, shit. They were just like I, I got. I think yeah. I almost got into a fight with one of them because yeah. they were just so like they were just so mean. You know, they were really looking at us like they wanted to beat the shit out of us, and like we were really lucky that we were, that we had like all these people around. <laughs> nah, for real. Like they were just mad that we were there. And yeah. then even the guy Jeffrey who was on the bill, like I mean, it was pretty much the same thing. They were just kind of just standing there, like. But that that'll that'll give you some some. Some yeah. charm, some yeah, character. Yeah. You know, if you can fight Bro, through lucky. shit like that, if you can fight through shit like that, man, then you know. Yeah, it's like I always feel like you know you gotta you gotta go through the really shitty shows to like deserve the good ones. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the amount of shitty videos. Like now, I've just passed like a hundred videos on my channel mm -hmm. since it's kind of been sort of popping. Yeah, and like you know, I'm, I made over a hundred videos in the period before that that I like took all of them down. But it's like. It's just funny, like to get to this point, I had to make a hundred good videos and a hundred shit videos. You yep. know what I mean? And it was like, so you got to make a hundred bad songs, hundred uh, hundred good songs. You know, yeah. fully, fully, bro. Yeah. Wait, okay. So how so how did you specifically get into like? Okay, I'm gonna find these stories that are like, you know, like some of them are not necessarily like, you know, headline stories, and I'm just gonna yeah. go in depth and I'm gonna fucking sp dedicate these hours to researching. Like, how did you come to fully, that bro. point? Well, you know what's really crazy, right? It's like, so to, to kind of like fill in the gap on that story, I was making these videos for rappers. I started doing a few reaction videos and shit was going nowhere. Like literally my channel was started mid 2015. Um, and I think literally between 2015 and December 2018, I had accumulated 200 subscribers total. <laughs> and I was grinding. Like I was uploading, you know, like a new sketch every week or so. I'd had 100 videos. So I was, I was hustling getting fucking nowhere like mm. it was brutal and i'd given up so many times um and basically just like one of my oldest friends uh the ordinary guy he runs a sick youtube channel called ordinary things oh. um we were hanging out uh new year's he just told me like bro like you're into hip-hop all you ever talk about is hip-hop i don't fucking care about hip-hop but like you know i was always just breaking out these stories it would always just be some shit that i was interested in and he was like you need to make a video about this shit that you're interested in and naturally, the first thing I said to him was like, oh, no one wants to hear like a lame British white guy talk about hip hop. Um, and I would just like say that. Or I would always say that. I'd yeah. be like, no one wants to hear my perspective on hip hop. Um, but then one day he convinced me. He was like, just fucking do it. Um, and so I did that first video, the why Jay-Z shot his brother at 12. <laughs> that was um, your first video? So that was my first like video, sort of like that. video of this style. There was yeah. actually one before that that was about the British rapper Russ. Um mm. 
which kind of flopped because it, it, that video had like a bunch of other problems with it. But basically, the Jay Z thing was like the first sort of trap mm. law type video that I did. But you know what's um, so funny to me about that video being your first video is that yeah. like I remember, I think it might have been when the Blueprint was coming out, uh, or it might have been the Blueprint 2, but either way, like Jay Z got featured on 60 minutes and mm. part of the rollout for the album was that like you know there were you know he has certain storylines or certain things he's never talked about before mm. and he's talking about those on the record as well as publicly and that was one of the stories was like like oh jay-z shot his brother and here he's yeah. he's in the 60 minutes interview or whatever it was and he's he's finally like coming clean about this so to me but that was probably about 2002 so it's very interesting how you could have a story that was a, a headline story at that time mm -hmm. but then you like unearthing it could just completely yeah. breathe new life into it and cause people to learn a bunch about somebody who like like most people feel like jay-z what the fuck do i have to learn about jay-z yeah, i already exactly. know so much about jay-z mm -hmm. but if you really like can zero in on interesting storylines that's one thing i feel like i've Hell learned yeah. on a personal level from your videos is that you can make people be curious all over again even Hell if they yeah. feel like they know everything there is to know about that person yeah, bro. I, I appreciate that, man. I appreciate you noticing that. Because the thing is, like, you're totally right. And, like, when I got into that video, you know, it was more of a case of, like, my friend egging me on uh, mm -hmm. and it just being like, okay, like, what's an interesting hip hop story that as a headline, as a thumbnail, like, my friend, this dude who's not necessarily that into hip hop would be like, oh, shit, I want to know about Jay-Z did this thing that I yeah. didn't know about. Or maybe, like, you, maybe you vaguely knew a little bit about the story, but I'm going to sort of just find all of the publicly available information and just lay it out for you in a way that yeah, you're going to enjoy fucking, as like you're insane, entertainment. Dude. Appreciate that, man. What, really what's, that, man. what's the hardest you ever went with it? Like, what's the most in-depth you've ever gotten to, to like a moment where you were like, Jesus, I cannot believe I'm actually doing this right now when you're like looking through the birth certificate information <laughs> of like the rapper's <laughs> kids or something? Oh, man, there's been a few of those. There's been a few of those. Yeah, some, sure. of the, some of the uh, court, reading like court transcripts of like 6 9 stuff, was pretty deep the cash money uh the cash money yeah, young look. money lawsuit stuff like i read through like the whole all the legal papers with that yeah. um and you know that that shit was interesting because i feel like my thing is like whenever i attack a story just like i try and just keep it in the front of my mind all the time of just like you know like tell me something i don't know like even if it's a story everyone knows like the kanye taylor shit like what can i every every single time i do a story i want to at least bring you a fact or a concept or an angle on a well-known story that like people haven't necessarily looked at or covered before mm. and just like i'm always looking for that like magic moment where it's like here's a thing that that people haven't unearthed and with that it's like i get the court papers and it's like okay well there's just minutiae in here that people haven't bothered looking into and like that's where i feel the good story comes from hell yeah man you know what's funny is i would i've always thought that one interesting thing about dj vlad's channel which obviously you end up uh, referencing his stuff all the time but is yeah. that he's sort of like re like realized in a lot of ways that you could have a rapper who's a you know fourth tier rapper who just happened to be around a popular rapper for a couple years but those stories that that rapper has about the really famous rapper a lot of times could be things that millions of people are mm -hmm. going to want to hear about because people actually really are hungry for, uh, you know, real shit for, for stuff that will make them feel like they understand a Jay-Z on a level that, especially now with the way social media is and everything, it's like, you're never going to get an uncut Jay-Z mm -hmm. thing. Like Jay-Z does totally. not allow himself to be on camera unless it's, completely controlled so when you when you do have a tiny thing like jay-z snatching the phone out of the guy's hand who was filming beyonce yeah. it's mm. like oh my god like you get to see the real him that's what rap uh, famous people hide that from us these days and like a lot of times yeah you know seizing upon that but what's interesting is that you as an outsider you've sort of been able to create like a whole thing out of sort of finding those nuggets without necessarily having that person come and tell you them directly yeah, bro, for sure. I mean, like, real talk, I think what you say about me being, like, an outsider is, like, so, so important because, mm. you know, like, my thing is that, like, I roast people, I go in, I make mm -hmm. fun of them, I diss people, like, I, you know, part of that is, like, I want my videos to just be mad entertaining and, like, mm. I want to give you all this information, but I want to, like, keep your attention with, like, fun little things. Yeah. But also, I think, you know, I know a lot of people, like, 
you know, I know there's aspects of my shtick and what I do that people don't like or like rubs rubs people up the wrong way. But like, I think it's really important for hip hop to have an outsider voice. And like, like you say, like Jay Z's whole existence is so stage managed that like you need a guy like me to come along and call him an elevator punching bag because everyone else mm-hmm. is too scared to do that. Yeah, you know what I mean. True. Like, <laughs> it's so and, true. And and I like kind of made my peace a long time ago as far as like you know my objective isn't necessarily to like you know get some clout and like befriend all of these rappers and like be hanging out with all the rappers it's like i gotta make the best video for the viewers that's gonna just like make them laugh the most that's gonna you know say stuff that other people might be too scared to say about jay-z or drake yeah do you feel like the reason do you feel like you get away with it though because you're in the uk so you're like kind of chilling you're like oh i'm I'm not gonna be at the club i don't have to worry about fucking drake sending sending the ovo goons at me yeah, that's. I mean, that that is kind of part of the uh, part of the benefit yeah. of being over here. <laughs> like, real talk. Like, the I, the kind of guy I am. Like, I don't get out much. Like, yeah, this, exactly. Funny, this whole quarantine shit. Like, I'm usually just sitting in my room writing a video anyway. Like, I'm kind of a fucking boring dude. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of not worried about exactly. running into people. No, but at the sure. same time, like, I roast everyone. Like, I make the jokes. I go as hard as I can with that stuff. But like, yeah. at the end of the day. I'm not in the business of exposing people with information that's not already out there. Like, mm-hmm. I don't go around messaging people and saying, exactly. like, oh, who's got dirt on this person? I'm just making jokes out of stuff that's already there. You know what I mean? It's like the thing with Drake. It's like I roast him all the time for the young girl shit. But, like, that's you know what I mean? It's public like public information, yeah. Everyone's, everyone's saying it. And I'm just roast. I'm saying the stuff that people are saying in the streets that they're joking about drake with their friends i so. mean I, I i know so much more about drake's dating life from oh watching God. your video yeah, like, because it's all these little <laughs> nuggets that are out there in the press and they're out there in the gossip rumor mill but to see it all compiled back to back it's yeah, like dude, wow you're... really I, I feel like this is giving me a portrait of this guy's dating life that i never had before <laughs> dude i didn't know anything about this whole j-lo georgia yeah, i mean exactly. smith thing i mean like i knew mm. i guess a little bit but i guess i didn't i didn't really know i actually just sent that video to my girl earlier because we were talking about just like georgia smith and just like yeah. her musical like trajectory i guess and she was just like she she felt like drake stifled her career and that like since Drake doesn't fuck with her, like that's why a lot of like that's why she's not like mainstream famous. And I was like, I, I didn't really have a stance on what she said, but I just sent her your video. I was like, I learned a lot yeah. about that situation from this video. That's kind of the, that's kind of the game you play though, right? Like when yeah. you sort of like you know when you massively accelerate your career by associating yourself with mm-hmm. with a massive artist, you're like you know you're playing with fire because well, on the one hand you're getting all of that bonus free clout from fucking around with drake and whatever you're doing with him behind the scenes behind closed doors is all well and good but like you know unless you're going to marry drake and you're gonna you're gonna yeah. be the dude that that is going to be or the, the chick that's going to be in with drake forever the relationship's probably going to sour at some point and then like what are you going to do when your career is kind of going a little bit left like should you blame that on drake but you kind of you wanted the free clout that came with messing with drake so i don't know but yeah, bro, I'm glad you like that video. I do. Um, wait, uh, another one too was when um, you were telling a story about how Eminem got sued by like the the dude because he fucking like pistol whipped him or something like that. That was crazy. oh shit, yeah, yeah, bro. Fucking. Yeah, that's a classic story. There's there's a lot of classic Eminem stories, man. It's so, yeah, right. Like, he's a, he's another dude that like you never get any real shit from him now. You I, only yeah. see Eminem when it's very carefully curated. Yeah. So people love being able to see him. Even I was watching the uh, that L.A. Originals documentary on Netflix the other oh, yeah. night, and he's just hanging out in the tattoo shop, and I'm like. It's so weird to imagine Eminem just hanging out in a tattoo shop. Like you would no, never yeah. have that, and you would never let him just stick a camera in his face. You know, it's yeah, like hell no. he, he, the, these celebrities these days they just don't operate on that level because they can't take the chance. You know? Yeah, because yeah, Crazy, it's man. the weirdest thing, man. You think like these these celebrities that are especially like the top tier rappers, they're just like they're portrayed to be these idols, but like they're in the crib farting, shitting <laughs> like anyone else. You know what I yeah, mean? Man. And it's just like. It's such a weird experience, especially when you consider like the new era of artists that aren't really doing that. They're more focused on like being in your face all the time. Like, you know, the Migos are like, there's always a new piece of content or a feature or something from Migos that like, mm. offsets fucking uploading four hour gaming videos now and shit. Like, <laughs> right. That's just, crazy. It, it's like the new media celebrities and rappers are just like constantly shoving content in your face, but like but, the legacy ones, they're just protecting themselves. Right. You know? like, yeah. like Migos have put themselves in a very different category of like mm. just 
inundating the industry with their work. Like nobody puts out more verses. Like it's not like they're thinking like, oh damn, like take off. Like you already did thirty five fucking verses this week. Like maybe you shouldn't go to another thirty five yeah. features. It's just like, <laughs> but with Drake, it's like you know every Drake feature is a moment. You know, it's like, it's it's very curated. You know what I think is funny is about uh, people like worrying or like thinking you should worry about what Drake thinks of you. It's like, from your perspective, as somebody who prior to this did not have a lot going on, it's like, if you get to the point where Drake is actually upset with you. Or Drake even knows who you are. That is, that's amazing. You've you've officially like reached like an upper echelon status in society compared to where you were before. And maybe you could find a way to make the relationship better from there. (laughs) But uh, I mean, I I think that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Bro, I I always say, like people say to me like, bro, aren't aren't you scared of like a rapper like, that's heard one of your jokes like pulling up on you and like you know what i mean i'm not i'm not best like video ever right anything. there that's the best video you know I mean? ever <laughs> well that's the best video ever but also i say like if a rapper's got a problem with something something i've said about them if they pull up on me i'm straight up apologizing straight away <laughs> i'm apologizing on site because i'm i don't want to smoke with anyone I'm and at the end of the day at the, at the end of the day i would hope that they could like understand and not understand but i like, appreciate that just like I'm just a fucking comedian. I'm just cra- out here cracking jokes. I don't yeah. really want smoke with people. What what fucking props do you get by like beating me up? Look at me. Yeah, like <laughs> I don't. I, I don't feel like, and, and obviously I don't think it like hurt his career all that much. But I I don't think like Russ really got a lot of W from the fans mm. for, for <laughs> yeah, sending no. people after me or for the thing with Guap oh, no. Dad because it, it always sort of reads that way it's like why is a but, why is this a rich celebrity sort of picking on a guy who's just like a funny guy on the internet. I will say, really, I will say, nobody talked shit about him anymore. Russ? No. I think the bro, fans My next do. video is a Russ video. Oh. My next video is on Russ. About, about, <laughs> about him getting niggas beat up? No, it's, it, well, it's kind of about why everyone hates him, but like also, it's a crossover thing. Basically, I'll, I'll like, I'll, I'll give you the. Give I you need the, the private link. Yeah, I, I need the early link. Yeah, yeah, I'll hit you. No, I'll Before hit you. it's, it's done, I'll hit a draft. It, <laughs> <laughs> half done. I'll, lay, I'll stream me doing it. But um, no, I'm doing, I'm doing a thing about why everyone hates Russ, but like, I don't know if you know, we've got a Russ in the UK who everyone also hates. Right. So I didn't know, oh, I, I didn't know he was Russ. hated, but I knew he had another one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, oh, hated. Okay. He's hated. So I'm doing a video. It's kind of like why everyone hates anyone called Russ. And then um, like, the, the two Russes beef with each other as well. <laughs> so it's like a sort of Russception type shit going on. Russ, like, on, oh, wow. Russ on Russ violence. But yeah, bro, I, I remember seeing the video about him him sending his goons for you, and like he seems to be sending the goons. I, I watched the one where uh, they put the put the beats on Smoke Perp as well because I talk about that uh, in the video, and it's like and Guap I don't know Day. how much bra- and Guap Day, yeah, yeah, bro, I don't know how much bragging rights there are to, to fucking send in your miscellaneous goons. <laughs> See, but listen, no, no disrespect to, to Russ, but the thing I think is funny is that <laughs> Southside never See, got beat up by Russ's I goons. Know, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. Wonder why, wonder why. It's, yeah, it's weird. Like, what's the difference? I don't like, know. Oh, oh, Smoke Perp in London. Oh, uh, fucking Guap Dad by himself in Texas. Yeah, you know? maybe it's the exactly. like fifty. For, maybe it's like the five hundred guns the Southside's always yeah. showing on Instagram Live. That might be part of it. Yeah, I need more guns. It's not that impressive. Know, yeah. But yeah. isn't like so is like Southside is like doesn't Russ know Russ people know like Twenty One Savages people and they're cool with that's all Atlanta stuff. So yeah, yeah that's there's probably some that's connections there. Atlanta. But I mean, he's they, not running up on none of the Atlanta. They niggas. were going crazy on it, each other for a minute though. Like, if Twenty One Savage came out and was like "fuck Russ," like he's not. No, they were in the strip club together. You remember that saying. footage? Yeah, that was fire. Yeah, but I'm saying like that was the, so funny. That was kind of fire. That that gave him like. See, you guys are acting like he didn't get cool points. He got a little cool points. I'm sorry. No, but I don't think anybody well, really cared about the the nail salon beating. I don't. Think no, he, not like, you. Well, yeah. There's no video of you, but like. There's a video of them and Smoke Perp and like him vividly like punking Smoke Perp after after they mm. saw him again and then they were like, "What's up, nigga?" Well, and I, then I, I just want to say this is that within rap, I mean, I think Lil Dicky is another good example of it where my I don't mes- think my almost, Messiah, I don't my Lord think, yeah, I mean, his show is amazing. There's no <laughs> denying that. But this is the thing is that it's like I don't think most rappers really like have heard Lil Dicky's music. I don't think they really care about his rapping, but most rappers can tell that Lil Dicky is pretty popular and successful. Mm. So to the average rapper, they don't give a fuck about what his music actually sounds like. They just know he's popular and successful. So, they'll do, so they'll, they fuck with that. To, to most rappers, success is the name of the game. Mm. They don't really give a fuck about And so with Russ, it's like, I, I don't think 21 Savage most likely has really spent that much time Hell listening no. to Russ's music, but Russ is very successful. So the 21 Savage is pretty much like, Hey, right. you lit. You lit. I'm, cool. I'm yeah, lit. You're, yeah. you're lit. It's cool. Like, let's let's chop it up. 
I think the smartest thing Russ has done, though, is is he's played like everyone fucking hating Russ to his Mm. advantage so, so well. Because the fact is, and I kind of, this is kind of the point that I'm making that video, is that at the end of the day, it's like people tweeting and saying fuck Russ, it's only a net win for Russ. Because if you already didn't like Russ, you're already going to think fuck fuck Russ. If you already liked him, you're going to be even further incensed to be like, no, like Russ is the guy. And if you'd never heard of him, well, now you fucking, now you've heard of Russ. So it's it's weird. It's it's like you have Russ's fans who, for the most part, I don't think are the kind of people who give two shits about an Adam 22 beef for a smoke perf beef. But then you have like the mainstream rap world, the online rap fans who are the types of people that are way more interested in something like the Russ Adam 22 smoke perp type beef. But those are the types of people who probably mostly know about Russ from the drama and from the beef yeah. and maybe aren't necessarily the people who are most likely to listen to his music. But I mean, I'm of the opinion that like Russ is better. Like him having that level of controversy is probably still a net win for him because it's still going to cause people to, you know, that familiarity is still going to be the thing that forces people to check out your music video or listen to your album regardless, you know? Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I think it's smart, man. I think the, the clout chasing game is, uh, you know, it's, Name it's a, a, game, it's a man. tough cookie to crack, but it's yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, man. Oh, Adam, oh. Adam, like, you, you must know, you must see a lot of people, you know, coming and going to interviews and, like, you know, the moves that people make on the come up, getting in, getting in beefs, getting in fights, like, the shit change, the rule book changes on such a daily basis, man. This is very, very true. Yo, where where do you get your ideas from? Like, like, is there a certain process that you typically go through? Or is it the kind of thing where, like, do, do you ever find yourself sort of struggling to come up with ideas of things to make videos about? Or is or, or, are you very rich with uh, ideas for that stuff? Yeah, man, I've got hella ideas. Like, I've, I've, ever since this sort of started taking off, like, you know, from the first day that I, I made that Jay-Z video, I had a short list of, you know, like three, five ideas because they're all just like these are all just classic stories that I've read about in the fucking 20, 20, whatever years that I've been listening to hip hop, like just stories that I'd read about and remembered. So like anytime I spot something or anytime I'm researching a story and it reminds me of something, um, I just put all of my story ideas into a list. And I've got I've got hundreds and hundreds to choose from. But like, you know, I'll usually choose I'll maybe plan out like a month in advance, like, you know, what five or six I'm going to cover just based on I'll, sc- I'll literally just scroll through the list. and I'll be like, oh, yeah, like Cardi B's story or, you know, mm-hmm. I'll do something on Wayne again. Um, Have you- and then I try and. Yeah, sorry. No, no, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I, I just try and like keep tabs on what people are enjoying, like obviously, you know, views is the name of the game. So like certain mm-hmm. artists that are maybe more popping on views, I might might bump them up and do them a bit more recently but then also like like the tim westwood video that i did like you know that was a passion project i'd literally for an, the entire year i'd wanted to do the tim westwood shooting just because he got a shot right story that I, yeah yeah that like, that's it, a classic one yeah i didn't i didn't watch the full thing that's but I, I knew the gist of the story is he got shot yeah westwood yeah, said, it, he said he would pay someone to shoot him again because it was so good for his career <laughs> <laughs> whoa that's a fact. You, you need to pay Russ to, to send goons to, to put the beats on oh, you again, Adam. So that's play, a good idea. Yeah. Play, what no, your career I, would, I, mean? I would pay Young Thug to send goons to beat me up. Well, no, they can't shoot me or anything. They can't hurt me too bad, but just the idea of it would be cool. <laughs> Have you ever been come come spray up the tour bus, bro? (laughs) Yeah, exactly, exactly. (laughs) Have you ever been in the middle of like researching a story and then being like, ah, like I don't have enough information. I'm just gonna chop it out. I'm just gonna quit this one. Uh, Not very often. I think usually what it is is like I'll pick a story or a topic, and like sometimes the core story. I mean, you'll probably be able to tell from certain certain videos, but like Mm. sometimes the core story isn't enough to carry like a 10, Mm. 15 minute video. Mm. So like. I'll pick an angle that can kind of supplement it. So, like, I guess, like, a good example of that, right? It wasn't a short story, but the Lil Uzi, Ur- the Lil Uzi Vert video I did about him having the beef with uh, Drama and his label. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, like, in that, you know, there's, like, a big, like, there's, like, a three-minute sequence in there where I, I take a look at his car collection. Um, yeah, exactly. Because I just, I needed, like, an extra element to just demonstrate, like, why him beefing with his label over money was yeah. is, is dumb because and and that was like the perfect example so yeah if i find a story like certain things like i don't know maybe the ynw melly story i did like pretty short you know i'll just come up with an element or an angle where i can give you new information about this person that like maybe people haven't covered to to pad out a really thin story but generally generally man like you know the opposite happens i'll jump into a story and i'll end up finding a piece of information i didn't know that like leads to like 
fucking just an entire five minute sequence of telling people shit that I didn't even know. <laughs> right. Yeah, that right. Together, so. yeah. Like I just did that Alex only fans review, which is like, that you was know, dope. as soon as that idea popped into my head, I was just like, Oh, I could get millions of views doing that. I'm doing that. Um, but it was a weird thing because it's like, yeah, I had to pad it a lot. Cause it's like, there's only so much I could really say about her only fans, yeah. which is like, Oh, look, yeah. like there's your boob. There's your underwear. Cool. Like, you know, I had to like actually sort yeah. of dig into like, why is this person famous? Why is this person interesting to people? And, you know, I actually had a lot of fun with that. And like, I, I feel like I'm very motivated at this point because yeah. of the quarantine where there's not as much to do, where it's like, I want to actually like just really try to like think of these things to make videos about, which is it's, it's pretty blatantly like influenced by your stuff, to be totally honest. I was gonna say, oh, look bro, at it's you. Dope. It's dope. Look at you, trap lore, fucking inspire. Hey, come on, inspiring come on. everyone. No, it's, it was sick, bro. I love that video. I love the young shop video you did as well. It's fire. It. Like, you know what I mean? Fucking I more people was... doing. Uh, I thought he was going to wait until we did our show to talk about Young Chop. And I get on YouTube and he's already talking about it by himself. I'm like, oh, I mean, he got arrested for letting the dog starve to death. I'm like, I, I cannot. It was like Saturday <laughs> afternoon and I had a lot of energy and not a lot to do. And I was like, let's do this. Let's do this. I got real hyped up on that caffeine and I just went in. There it was go. sick, bro. No, I really enjoyed both of those. But like, no. yeah, to what you were saying about sorry just one thing yeah, um, yeah as far as like giving the backstory and padding out the stories like recently i've just been trying to make it more of a habit to like you know I'm, i've been setting up a lot of stories with artists like backstory because i've just got this idea that like what would be dope is if someone came to my channel that maybe wasn't even that into hip-hop uh -huh. you know like like with your alex video giving that context at the start of the video so that like if i knew fuck all about this chick i can just in like two minutes get an un get up to speed and like what what she's all about and why mm. she's doing this so yeah uh, you, you'll probably notice a lot of my recent videos like i'm doing one on rich the kid at the moment and it's like mm. you know to, to understand the feud that i'm going to talk about i just want to give a you know yeah. a real expedited five minute biography <laughs> at, up front so so yeah i've just been doing that a lot and I, I you know i feel like that's the way to pad things out make it accessible for someone's never fucking heard of young chop or mm. alex or or rich the kid or whatever so i, I don't want to uh count my chickens before they hatch but i'm very very optimistic about this dapper dan video that i have coming out because Ooh. i actually read his his book and i like my my brain switched into youtuber mode at one moment in his book where i was like oh mm. i can make a video about this part of dapper dan's life and get a shitload yeah. of views but like mm. also sort of do justice to his overall story even though i'm using that clickbait and i feel like that that mentality Actually, it, it really makes me very encouraged to read more because I'm like, there's a lot of information that's in books that is, oh, yeah. you know, you wouldn't really be able to find it by just searching Google for that information. So like, totally. I, I, I actually, there's an 800 page Pimp C, uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going to oh, claim sick. that I'm doing this, but this 800 page Pimp C biography that I've been reading for a while now, and it just sort of hit me like, I could do like a fucking mega deep dive into Pimp C and that would be something that I think people would fuck with. So, you know, uh, you know I'd love it, bro. Do it. Yeah. I want to watch that. Have you I done it? Have you, have you read many books uh, in the pursuit of your channel? And also, can I get the lighter? Yeah. Yeah, bro. I got, I'm trying to reach for some books right now that I got by my bed. Oh, but shit. Yeah, bro. I'll be, I'll be reading like, what have I got here? I got the biography of Dr. Dre popping. Good one. My ideas. I got the P. Diddy biography. Uh, the P. Diddy biography that I read to do the P. Diddy shine. Uh, yeah, in the club shooting. Fucking doc that I did. Yeah, yeah. The, the club shootout. Like, I read this amazing P. Diddy autobiography. Um, and it's just dope because the exactly what you're saying. So, right? Because it's like you can do a bunch of research on YouTube and find a lot of really great facts that way. But it's like if you delve into a book, especially a book that was written like 10, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. exactly. it's the minutia. It's, it's the tiny little details that people have overlooked for 10 years that. Mm -hmm only become interesting because of some shit that happened last year i feel like that's where you find the best stories and like the best just the best little details that i think are going to make a, a story that's going to exist in 2020 on youtube um so much more valuable because you've you've gone and you found information like the story that i did on how dmx broke out of jail when he was at 50 when he was 15 years old mm. that's pretty much entirely a story from his book that i couldn't find anywhere online oh, and i was yeah. just like that's this amazing. is lit yeah, did you yeah uh... it's like it's did you read the Gucci Mane biography? Yeah, bro. Love the Gucci bi biography, man. It's sick. So, yeah. so sick. That was a great one. But it's like I was just looking at that on my shelf and thinking like, you I know, borrow, I, but I feel like the best Gucci clickbait has probably been done because it's like, okay, obviously he killed this guy. Mm hmm. Yeah, but, yeah video you know, about that was really there. really there's, there a, lot, there's yeah. a lot more that, that you probably could do 
Oh, you know what would be a you good? You gave me the most information I've ever known about that Gucci, story. Gucci Gucci I'm a huge right, Gucci man. No, I'm the, a huge Gucci man fan. Gucci's too. like various acts of violence over the years, <laughs> like in particular the video of him beating the chick up on stage at one of his early shows. Oh, fuck. That yeah. was that's a crazy that's video. Uh, that's a video. I don't though? even think he talked about that in the book. He uh and he threw that threw that chick out, the, out of the Hummer, Hummer well, like out of out of like the, <laughs> out of the Hummer fucking limo, I think. Bruh, that's, bruh. that's why when Gucci saying, that? Uh, Gucci saying it's on the list. It's on the list. Gucci saying red that. or blue pill, that. like good sure. good Gucci or evil Gucci, and his girl yeah. was commenting on Instagram like, no, no, you guys don't want evil yeah. Gucci. I'm yeah. like, bruh. as a real Gucci fan, you do not want evil Gucci. Really he is don't. capable of Hell some nice. evil. Somebody said, somebody said, uh, you know, violent Gucci music with new Gucci like attitude or something. And I was like, yeah, oh, like that's that. what you want, man. We we need that Gucci with the big pregnant codeine belly. Oh man, man. You know there was I mean? a certain... that's where all the good ideas were. I'm getting one of those, man. <laughs> that's where the good <laughs> ideas were. No, but there there is a weird thing with that where it's like. You know, Gucci Mane as an artist was probably a bit better when he was basically living like a completely unhinged, unhealthy lifestyle. But then yeah. like us being fans of Gucci Mane, the human being, it's like, hell yeah. I love seeing you on your Instagram story getting up at six in the morning to go work out. I love seeing you no, and your wife. Then, uh, you dude, know? but then he, he posted that meme. It was like it was like the dude running through the house with the two pistols. And it was like, <laughs> <Yeah>. it was <laughs> like. That's young, why the, the old Gucci <laughs> might be back when you see some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, that was crazy. He was like, <laughs> uh, 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 Gucci man shooting up young Jeezy's <laughs> homies in his crib. That was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> bro it's it's a madness but yeah that gucci book's got so so many good stories but like that's that's the thing it's like people say to me shit like you know oh are you worried about running out of ideas or like are you worried about someone else coming along and doing exactly what you're gonna do and it's like bro like what do you mean running out of ideas like shit's happening all the time there's mm. like infinite things and what people are looking for i think they're not just looking for anyone to like do the story. They're looking for like me or Adam or fucking, I don't know, Blackie Speaks, whoever to yeah. like, you know, take on the story and then give their perspective. It's like this Russ story that I'm doing next week. It's like I'm doing a US versus Russ and UK Russ. It's a perspective that like very few people are going to mm -hmm. connect those dots on that story. So it's like there's fucking there's just unlimited stories to do. There's unlimited angles and like mm. there's more content like this good for everyone because I think there's just an appetite for this type of shit. And Especially like, right now, like, dude. You could right be now. running it up, bro. For sure, bro, man. Bro. For sure. I'm I'm working overtime at the moment. I know. I see. You. Wait, wait. Do you, possible, man. do you drop like every Monday or something? Because I, I feel like every 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 Monday I wake up, there's a new video. I try and drop every Monday. In an ideal world, I would drop every Monday and Thursday, but mm. I'm just uh, so I've I've got an editor that I work oh, with. Oh, do you? Okay. So basically, we are we're just we're just going crazy back and forth, just trying to get as many together as possible whilst this quarantine's going on. Because like as well, like she's stuck at home, she can't go out. We've both got fuck all going on, so we're just like let's just let's just do these vids. You so, got a uh, female editor? I was gonna say, is this your, is this, I got is a female it, editor, man? Wow, very is woke. Very, very, very no? woke. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> pretty woke. No, no, I just, bro, it literally just, just so happened. It's funny because, like, before this, um, in my corporate film life, like, uh, my corporate film business had kind of grown a bit, and it wasn't huge, but, like, I had maybe, like, three, four people working for me, mm. um, but they were all dudes, and, like, I really wanted to hire, like, a female editor onto yeah. the team because people would be like, oh, you're just a bunch of dudes, and it'd mm. just be kind of like, oh, shit, I'm trying to be trying to be woke up in here. Um, right. But, yeah, you. it just so happened. She, she came along, and she's just fucking super talented, and, yeah, we've got a good thing going. Um, so shout out to my editor, Camille. She's a boss. Shout out, Camille. There's a mothering nature that a woman brings to any situation, any I situation. feel like. In, in a business, like, saying mothering is probably inappropriate, but Why? I feel Why? like, Why you know. Why is that inappropriate? You, you, you want a woman in the room. Not because, like, you know, yeah, sort yeah. of making it like all women are good for is yeah. taking care of kids or whatever. But there yeah. is an extent to which, like, if you have, like, a woman in your workplace it's and it's a bunch of dudes that they're going to, like, care about your well-being yeah. in a way that a lot of dudes are just not going just to. Do, and it's give a fuck, it's yeah. very good to have that energy yeah. around, I think. Yeah, I think it's good. And also, I guess, uh, to a certain degree, it probably gives, like... Just an extra female perspective as far as, like, the shit I do. I don't For know. Sure. She's never, like, call, called me out on some dumb shit that I've said. But I, I'd like to think that, like, if I... If I if you took it too gag, overboard. Yeah, if I drop some serious misogynistic joke without realizing it, hopefully she'd, uh, she'd pull if me you, up. If you misgender that. somebody, then she'll call you Dude, out. Dude, you, you made me yeah. realize that that, con that that Kanye bar was a little more sus than I really realized. Because, like, you I didn't... Taylor might still have sex? No, but he said... 
at first he said, I feel like she might owe me sex or some shit yeah. like that. And I, that was susser than the actual line. It is, that right? Came, it was owe weird. me sex. It's kind of, it's more transactional. It's kind of fucked up. And like, yeah, that reads again, weird. Yeah. Bro, bro, it's just, again, not to just go back to that story, but it's yeah, just but... like, it's just fucking, it's just crazy. The whole taping the phone call thing. And it's, yeah, that was it's crazy. Like, he, him and Kim just literally just completely just leap over the idea that this woman wouldn't want to be called publicly a bitch on a billboard charting song. Mm. Like, and that's not yeah. even like, that's not even what he said to her on the phone. He like, he said the weird sex right. line and she kind of took mm. it kind of easy and was just like, oh, okay. But like, yeah. I don't know if I'm going to, I want to, you know. She's I, like, I, I haven't seen almost anybody publicly take Kanye's side in that whole thing. Like me and Vlad were talking about how fucked up it was. And it's, it's not like I really heard from anybody that, I don't think at wrong. the time in, in 2009 I was in what fucking like ninth grade eight like yeah something like that I don't know eighth grade dude I didn't fucking think that that was that big of a deal but now I'm like oh dude why did he do that you, you know what I think happens a lot and this is something I've noticed a lot through doing my videos is that I think especially a lot of old media shit like that mm -hmm. where it happened on the VMAs in 2009 mm, and like yeah. a lot of the footage has kind of been lost like the key moment of him interrupting her you see all the time and you see it on the news but it's like you know, I feel like the value and the nuance of those situations, it's in finding those moments that haven't been played over and over again. The moment of like Beyonce giving giving uh, Taylor Swift a chance to come back out and speak. It's like those moments kind of get lost in time. Yep. Mm -hmm. If you didn't watch I that think... live, if you didn't watch that live, you wouldn't know that that even happened. Totally, totally. Yeah. And it's like it's, it's the same shit with like reading books for, for story ideas. It's, it's just the case that like, you know, little details make the story and like little mm -hmm. details are what can make or break the narrative and like if it's some shit that happened 11 years ago little details get lost and then before you know it like 2020 people have just got the complete wrong idea about the story so it's good to like break it apart and try and set it straight i guess mm. is the way i think about it yeah. let me let me ask you this uh that makes me think about everything now what's Damn. what's the business of running your channel like like how, how well is it doing is it a struggle obviously i've heard uh, cpms are down for a lot of people right now how's that all going it's been good to be honest, man. Like, I guess the, the journey for me is it, it was weird because obviously like I'd been grinding, trying to make YouTube videos and like working in film for, for years anyway. So I guess when I made that Jay-Z video, that was like January 2019. And then the first thing that like really went viral sort of broke out for me was my Frank Ocean video mm. um, on Frank Ocean finessing Def Jam for 20 mil. Oh, and yeah. then literally that that hit like a million in like a week. It was my first breakthrough hit and then literally immediately off of that i was eligible for adsense uh i like monetized my channel um and then within like two months of that i was making enough to like go full time and make a living yeah. so i basically like left my business moved into just making youtube videos um and then basically i just hustled until i could afford an editor so that i could like double my productivity um and that's kind of it and like it's grown it's grown nicely since then um but i guess like my goal at the moment is to just um like increase the output that I can put together, but like it's going well. I mean, I you know, what I mean, I I can't complain. Like, I, the view count is is going up each month, and uh, it's pretty good. But I don't want to like over expand the business. I don't want to bring too many more people in, um, yeah. or like over complicate it. Like sometimes people hit me and it's like, oh, can I like intern for you, or can I like sh sh you should hire a researcher. But like, I want the videos to be like a pure expression of like my perspective on these stories. So I don't want like people coming in researching or like pitching in ideas or angles like mm. i want what goes on screen to be like my personal reaction or, or response to like whatever info i found in the story so mm. i don't want to like over expand or like over complicate the team uh like at this stage so um but yeah i mean it's going great like like i say i've got editor she works she works full time on this um i've got like some sponsor plugs that, that get me sponsorships here and there which don't um, and it's going nice, but like, I'm, you know, I mean, I'm basically, I'm still living the same as I was before. So it's not, mm. I'm not, uh, I'm not caking like a rapper yet, but hopefully <laughs> at some point. Have you ever seen any of his like videos where he'll have a sponsor, but he'll make a, he'll make a song about it? Yeah, that's pretty funny. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, bro. I, that's I how I knew you were really a rapper. Different. That's they, how I knew you really like were they, a rapper. Do they request that <laughs> though? It, Is that a thing where the sponsors are like, so like, can you do another rap? <laughs> no, you know what's funny, right? I literally, I started doing the raps like the, 
I think I got like one or two sponsors that I did the old way. And then I was like, this is just kind of whack. Like I felt like such a fucking herb just sitting there being like, Hey guys, like <laughs> make sure you go on over to fucking stinkbox.com and sign up. <laughs> so I thought, I thought that shit was so whack. Um, mm. And I was like, just what can I do? Uh, I saw someone else. I think it was Nakey Jakey. I don't know if you know him. He's like a gaming YouTuber, but like he used to do his pa- some of his Patreon reads as raps at the end of his videos. Mm. And I was like, shit, that's dope. I'm going to like do that for my sponsors. Um, but like for for the longest time like sponsors wouldn't even comment on it i'd hand it in (laughs) just act like it's normal yeah they'd be like they'd be like yeah the video's approved cool and i'd be like what about the fucking fire 16 nice bit (laughs) like nothing but like i I mean i got got some uh, i got some good feedback on them recently so it's dope but yeah i mean we did a manscaped ad the other day and i mean we're basically like he did a manscaped reading the stuff about like the the ball cream and shit and i'm just like laughing my ass off it's so (laughs) off so obvious that i'm reading this for the first time ever (laughs) it's like i've never seen this before and i'm just dying laughing and they were totally fine with it and i'm like all right shit i guess they really just want to be talked about a lot of times they don't really care if it's like a goofy ass context they just want that link in the description. That's all they want. Mm, That's all they I want. The clicks. That's true. But yeah, bro. I think I think I just got my first uh, repeat sponsor. Really? So I, got, I think I got I think I got Skillshare back again. Because until until literally yesterday, I'd never have a sponsor come back a second time. Wow. So I was starting to think I was always a different one. I was starting wow. to think maybe they don't fuck with the rats. But that, now I got a repeat. That really is a thing that a lot of people don't know about is that it's pretty easy to get a sponsor one time and then from there it's like a little mm. bit more challenging. I should actually tap you with uh, Fashion Nova. That would be fucking hilarious uh, to yeah. see you doing hey, that. I rock some Fashion Nova. I, ro- I need to get my Insta more pop in because I had someone go in touch oh, yeah. and they were like, oh, can we can we do, we'll do that mm. on your Insta and then I sent them my Insta. They were like, no, nah, your number's trash. They're like, nah, bro, not, not yet. Hey, they got Dude, in. They got Kid Boo doing that shit. They can't be all that picky. <laughs> nah, but I mean, he Bruh, like Kid Boo. He has sake. like a couple thousand. Like, How many you got on Instagram? I got like eight thousand. Do you? Uh, I, uh, yeah, I hear you. Uh, yo, you're gonna, I was, you're, you're gonna get up. You're gonna at least get to ten k by this. We got you. But you know what? Okay, oh, shit. L- let me get just say boy. this. There, there, it's a weird thing in your head of like how shameless you should be because after I did the Alex OnlyFans review, it's like my brain starts going in various directions and it's like, well, I could do another Alex video and then I'm like, nah, like that doesn't sound like, I, I think that would be a little <laughs> bit corny. And then I'm like, well, you could do more OnlyFans reviews and I'm like, yeah, I could do more OnlyFans reviews, mm. but I need to like balance it out with other shit as well. Mm. And like, it's sort of... You know, sometimes it's it's like I was just looking at a uh, kid boo because he like keeps making these videos that get like a thousand views, yeah. like saying that he's like <laughs> quitting rapping. And I'm like, Good. I know I can get a lot of views if I make a video about what a fucking dumbass kid boo is. But it's like, do I really want to like actually put myself in the position of making a video about kid boo <laughs> for views? That just sounds I mean, kind of dirty, you know? I yeah, think so- any time spent looking at Kid Boo's face is, is time that could have been well better used elsewhere. That's a fact. Oh, man. That's a Snapple fact. Kid Boo. I keep telling him, like, bro, you better start playing with Alex, bro. She's going to pull up on you. Alex, <laughs> what's she going to pull up on you doing? Bro. She's going to pull up on Lena. She yeah. might. She got goons, bro. Who? Alex got goons. Where Alex. Alex goons will be switching on her for sure. I would love to see the goons. <laughs> Maybe I can make a video if she shows me the goons. I want to see a video of a guy with a gun screaming about, "Oh, you better not talk <laughs> shit about Alex's OnlyFans again." <laughs> that I'll, I'll take the bait. I'll talk about that at least. But I don't know. <laughs> Bruh, so like, what, I, I got to ask the big question that everyone's asking. Oh. I'm sorry if you've been asked this a million times, but both of you. What do you think Six Nines moves are going to be now that he's out the out the slammer? Hmm. You t- tell me if you agree with this. I feel like Go it's on. kind of quiet for Six Nine right now. Like people, they keep like planting different seeds of things of like, oh, he just spent so much money on cars and jewelry, or oh, he just got. I didn't even see that. He just got f- uh, one point five million followers, whatever. But I mean. There's definitely going to be a shitload of attention on whatever he does at this point just because yeah. it's 6 9 but it doesn't really feel to me like people are talking about it that much. But at the same time, he hasn't really given us yeah. that much. Like If I see an Instagram story of him saying something, it would be very interesting to see how much the rap world takes that and obsesses yep. over it. You know, mm. he, hasn't, he hasn't taken that leap yet. Yeah. Totally. 
totally i think i think it's all leading up to like a big moment and i think mm. because he hasn't like outright he's done he's dropped a few little you know he dropped a few little fucking segments little crumbs, of cheese yeah. around the place yeah little crumbs of cheese but like it's gonna pop when he drops his first thing and i think if he's smart it's gonna be like a song it's gonna be something that's monetized it's so better be. all of the attention goes to some shit that's gonna make him some some cash so i think it'll be a song and I think a certain point will come and he'll just drop a song and it'll just all be about that. Because I don't, don't think he can be out there clowning like he used to. But you know? that's the whole question is like, does his troll persona work for a song at this point? Because before he was able to get away with, for the most part, being like, yo, I'm the toughest motherfucker in the world. I'm going to kill you, blah, blah, blah. It's like, is he tempted to come back with a song where he like makes more jokes about being a snitch? Because that's mostly what he's given us so far is a bunch of snitch yeah, jokes. Snitch jokes. Yeah. I don't know if he does a pro snitching song that mm -hmm. anybody's going to be trying to hear it. Like obviously people he, will listen to yeah. it, but I don't know that it'll actually. What if he comes out and just like tries to just like be like some like dreams and nightmares Meek Mill beat switch where he's like he's like pleading for your fucking forgiveness in the beginning and then he's just like fuck y'all niggas at the end. I mean, it's gonna you be know? it's gonna be okay. a hard song either way because this is a guy who clearly like is able to get well written songs and is not. I don't gonna... know about that right now though. Yeah, you can find a million writers. Yeah, that's Nobody's facts, gonna be right. shy about writing a song for you. But that's I mean, facts, I'm, huh? I'm curious. What about producers? I guess any up and coming yeah, producer. All kinds of producers will give them shit. Yeah. yeah, a ghost producer. I think, so. I think the thing is, I think uh, whatever he does. I think the smartest thing he can do is just like be honest. And I think if he, because he's like making these little jokes about him being a snitch, I think that um, he's laying the he's laying the groundwork for him being honest. And mm. I think mm. you know so much of hip hop's about storytelling, people having an interesting story, like where are you from, what have you done, what dirt have you done, what did you get yourself out of. And I think if he, if people like the authenticity, and I think if he just comes out, he wears the snitch thing on his sleeve. You know, he makes some songs about like, you know. Talk us through why, like, make a song about what it was like making that decision, sitting mm. in the cell, making your decision to flip on everyone. Think and about that shit daughter. I'll listen to. Yes, but that's <laughs> the question is, like, can he pull off substance? Because up to this point, yeah. his music has been entirely devoid of substance. But that's can, what I'm saying. Where he comes you know, it's like, street. are we ready to see Daniel Hernandez as Talib Kweli? I don't know that I'm ready for it. Not even as Talib Kweli, but, like, I gave that specific reference of the Meek Mill's Dreams right. and Nightmares song because he could, like, start it off where he's, like, you know, being open and shit and then lead it into, like, oh, it's 6 9 fuck y'all niggas at the end of the song. Because you know? he has okay. to encompass yeah. both into the same pe song. Pe totally. People, I think, tend to give Six Nine too much credit for his music in a weird way because really? it's like, yes, he did have this bizarre series of like really big hits. You know that mm -hmm. that definitely happened. But I mean, go listen to his album, like his first project. Like, yeah, does, does that feel like a coherent project to you? Fuck no. It's, it's like, could, can you songs. honestly listen to that project and be like, oh, this is a guy who's going to have like an amazing rap career? I mean, that is very much still up for debate. Like, I have absolutely no doubt that there's going to be a lot of people who tune in no matter what. What yeah. I'm actually interested in is, like, can he become a in any way respected member of the hip-hop world from here? And mm. I, I have absolutely no idea, but I'm, I'm, it, I haven't necessarily seen that much evidence of it yet. Mm. It's, it, the, story, the story itself is so interesting so unprecedented mm. who's ever seen a fucking clown running around with six nine tattoos <laughs> on his forehead mm. he's got all of the cards in his favor but it depends what he drops if he drops some fire shit i was saying to someone on uh fucking discord the other day like if he comes out and if he dropped a song with if he got someone like the baby on a verse and just said bro mm. i'm gonna pay you the 250 you want for a verse you just rip me, diss me for a verse on me being a snitch, and then I'll do a verse responding to it. People will fuck with it. It'd be fire. That mm. is brilliant. Uh, if I was the baby, I wouldn't do it, I but there's definitely a lot of right. rappers who would do it. But is he seriously going to like face that criticism head on? See, that's that's also a big part of it. Is like, will Six Nine do an adversarial interview? The, like they they tried to get him on the Breakfast Club. They said Breakfast really? Club said that they tried to do that and that they turned it down. But I would love to see what Charlemagne has for that dude. I would love to hear, you know, like yeah. if he really comes out like that, like could you imagine Joe Budden interviewing Six Nine and like real, like he wouldn't do it, but oh, yeah. could you imagine him like really talking to him the way he wants to talk to him about his, I his think the behavior? Only, only 
only person he would like even do it with was if it was like uh, in the house orchestrated or if academics did it. I think that's the only way. He I want to know it. how much academics is getting paid for these fucking Instagram posts. You see the one of like, <laughs> oh, Facts. six nine and this fucking Latinx artist that followed each other back. It's like. Oh wow! Yeah, they followed yeah. each other back. What a uh, great story! I, I think there might have been some money exchanged right there. I'm sorry. Academics, uh, six nine industry plant for sure. Ten k projects industry plant. Academics has 10K been K fucking project. on the Instagram grind promoting that producer Russian too. He um, definitely, yeah, yes. you, you know, he got a check for that. I never heard of this dude before, but he has he has good numbers. But it's like What's maybe Russian, <laughs> maybe Russians about. About to produce something for six nine, and he's laying the seeds, you know, laying the crumb. I could see it. Yo, imagine academics just like orchestrating all this shit behind the scenes, like knowing exactly what is going to happen, so he's building up the characters because that's that's kind of. And this is so totally off topic, but that's kind of like the problem for academics' channel is that for a while he had like you know Soldier Boy six nine etc. X uh, Trippy. Oh, while in the fuck out, and it's basically like a soap opera, and then he's just like the dude yeah. breaking it all down for you. But now all yeah. the, all the characters in the mm-hmm. academic soap opera either chilled the fuck out, got locked up, or they got killed. So it's <laughs> like he has to like create a new he generation of it, yeah. of soldiers for his show. Why not Russian? <laughs> Why not Russian? And- you know what? It's interesting. Like, first off, I love academics. Like, he's he's fucking one of the dons in this thing that we're all trying to do. Mm. So shout out academics. But it, it, like you say, it's it's interesting. I, I like, feel like it, this it's this tough. thing of ours. This thing of ours. You ever hear the mafia dudes calling you know that? This I mean. thing of ours, mm-hmm. man. <laughs> all right, continue. <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to highlight that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I felt like it was easier than just saying us culture soldiers. Yes. Here, oh, I mean? hope that that sings to my heart too. Wow, I love that. <laughs> How's fun? You wouldn't understand. That's fresh. You wouldn't understand. Like You're not, not a creator. Not a white, content white, creator. White YouTube shit. Like, what do you think Yo, no, 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 don't say that. Don't say that. No, but um, fuck. Well, I've forgotten the point I was trying to make now. God damn it. What um, were we talking about? What were we talking um, about? Academics. Yes. Oh, yeah. Academics. I feel like it's tough to like split your time between the kind of more polished industry like. Ordinate, uh, fucking what's it called? Like everyday struggle type way of speaking about people, and more likely to like run into people or have to be face to face with someone than just talking shit on YouTube like he used to. Because he, I, I watch a lot of his old videos for research, and like you know, he was definitely used to be a lot more liberal about the way that he'd speak about people or diss people or sort of just make some jokes. Like obviously, academic, some of academic stuff's hilarious when mm. he just. He just is uh, is roasting people. So but, like, but, but I know that tricky. you, I know you deal with that shit because being a white person in hip hop, it's like mm. at, when you're just a fan, you can afford to laugh at shit more, and like you, you can afford to not think about the actual ramifications of what you're talking about. Yeah. Because as a person who's observing a culture that, for the most part, is black c- culture. You just don't want to put yourself out there like you have like a, a irresponsible perspective on a lot of the violence that we might sometimes have to talk yeah. about and stuff. Do you think about that a lot? Yeah, man, I think about it. And like I've, I've tried to do I try to take a nice mixture in stories that I cover because I don't just want to be that guy that's just like shooting, stabbing, sh- mm. shooting, stabbing, like something bad that's happened. Um, you know, I try and do a mixture. I did like an Akon um, setting up a, the, the fucking one billion dollar electricity project in Africa. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did the video on Snoop Dogg and, and the game marching to the LAPD uh, fucking precinct in response to like a lot of the you know violence on the black community perpetrated by the LAPD. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I, I try and get a mixture of those stories and cover those angles to just like you know have some positive stuff in there. But at the same time, like, I feel like uh, you know there's a lot of unreasonable arguments about like you know. Should I should I be doing what I do? Should you be doing what you're doing? And it's just kind of like I just love hip hop. I love these stories, and like there's no reason I shouldn't talk about them, give my perspective on them. If I say something that's fucking out, if I say something that's outrageous, and or if I say the n word, or if I'm racist, I deserve <laughs> yeah. to be cancelled. But like I'm not that type of guy. I fucking I love all of the artists that I'm talking about, even if they're doing some dumb shit and I'm dissing them or roasting them. Mm. Like you know what I mean? It's like people like. I used to get these comments that were so funny when I was first starting out. People would say shit like, uh, "Like, bro, why don't you go and make a video on the Red Hot Chili Peppers or, or, or some music you know something about?" And Dame like, Dash bro, said that shit you... to me too. <laughs> to Dame Dash, bro, <laughs> I couldn't name you one Red Hot Chili Peppers song, bro. It's right. like this culture is is all I've lived and breathed my whole life. So it's like, you know, I know I don't look the typical of fucking hip hop fan, whatever that might be, but like, 
all I listen to is the shit. So I've got nothing else to talk about. I know that's a funny uh, that's a funny perspective that like people should comment on things strictly within their ethnicity, not based on like yeah. what they're actually interested in. Yeah, man. It's to be to me like a lot of that stuff. It's just kind of I don't know. It's just it's just noise. It's it's sort of like I don't really feel like I need to. I don't think I've done anything so far that requires justifying or an apology or like an yeah. explanation. I'm just having fun talking about the artist music that I love, fucking cracking some jokes, being a sarcastic English prick like I actually <laughs> am. And I don't know. I just I'm just doing see, my but, thing. I don't see, know. But, but sometimes it's not about it, like if you've done anything. It's just like mm. just the uh, you know. It's just it's, it's it's more the fact of people just looking at it as like people capitalizing off something that they are per yeah. like, like 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 they're perceiving you guys to not know about and thinking that you don't actually care or that you mm -hmm. actually you just using it as like strictly yeah. monetary reasons you feel me totally. so you got to go hard like to I, justify yeah, your existence exactly you, exactly. Know? you got to yeah. prove yourself totally. you know? and with that i always think to myself like when i get those kind of comments or, or that kind of thing i always think to myself like i'm just going to keep going and i think people will say people shit will like that the... less and less as the years go on because like yeah. You know, it's going well for me at the moment, and and I'm just literally doing what I love, talking about the music I love, and like mm -hmm. I'm going to continue doing it for as long as I can. If they'll let me do this for ten years, mm. I'll still be doing this in ten years, and then you know what I mean. Tell me to make a Red Hot Chili Peppers video in ten <laughs> years when I've been doing hip hop back to back, and just like exactly. showing how much I'm dedicated to like learning about these stories, you know. And it's funny you you get a comment like that of just like, bro, you know nothing about this culture, and it's like, but I, Say, bro, I'll I probably know fucking... more about you. <laughs> more than you <laughs> bro, do. I spent. I just spent three weeks like soaking up this information because I love it and like mm. I love the people that are involved in it and you know what I mean I'm a sarcastic prick that's who I am no, but like sure. I'm dead I'm dedicating my life to this shit so it's like I ain't trying to do a Red Hot Chili Peppers video. Have you had any <laughs> offers or uh, thoughts on going corporate because if I was trying to run like a, a UK like Tim Westwood competitor or like a Quibi mm. The Quibi Tim Tim Westwood. I might go grab yeah, Trap yeah. Lord Ross and be like, "Yo, <laughs> we want you to yell over these beats for these rappers." Uh, any offers for shit like that? To be honest, not really. Uh, not really. I, I definitely I've got, to plug, uh, I've got to plug my charger in real quick. I hope the audio doesn't turn into trash. Oh, um, no, I haven't really had any offers like that. But to be honest, like I fucking I'm open to whatever people offer, but. My thing at the moment is I'm just really trying to like stay mega, mega focused in what I'm doing now. Mm. I just, I have a list of hundreds of stories. I just want to do them all. I just, I fucking love what I'm doing at the moment. So it's just like, I don't know. I, I don't want to get too distracted by any corporate stuff or side projects or anything. I just want to grind and like put out as many of these videos as I can really. Mm. If you could find me any crazy like Pharrell or uh, any RD stories, oh, I would yeah, love yeah. that. I'm gonna I'm add that high up on my list so that I'm gonna cover you some oh, Pharrell boy. stuff. There's some good Pharrell stuff. Pharrell's Pharrell's been involved in so much shit over the years. That's you know what I'm what saying. Mean? I know it's probably some old hood like you know like like uh, Fam Lay or like Fam like those, Lay. yeah Fam like Lay freestyle. You know or just like some cra it's some crazy Virginia beach stories from back in the day yeah. that I know no one's talked about. I need I need for that. Sure, man. No, for no. sure. I'll, I'll definitely put that high up on the list. But yeah, this is the thing. It's like the, the classic stuff. There's so many good classic stories. And mm -hmm. certain certain weeks, I just find myself, I'm like, oh, fuck, should I do something that's like really current and popping now? Mm -hmm. Might get the views. Or should I do some old school shit or like a Tim Westwood thing that is just going to be a joy for me to sit and research for a week? But mm -hmm. not necessarily everyone's going to fuck with. But you got to find that again. balance, you know? You should do it. Yeah, exactly. You should do a deep dive into if you could find evidence that Skateboard P has ever done a kickflip. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I'll like, do a forensic analysis. Forensic analysis of Ken, Ken Farrell actually skateboard. Yeah, I, I mean, think if, video if you're going to start calling me Skateboard A, I'm going to need some receipts, right? Like, I nobody's going to really like I think be... there's videos of him at least, like, doing an ollie or, like, at least riding a skateboard. No, I'm not doubting his cultural contribution. And to be honest, Pharrell was, like, putting BMX bikes in, in videos oh, back yeah. in the day, too. So I, I respect that for sure. I just personally would like to know to what extent Skateboard P has skateboarded. Is, yeah. Adam, would would you would you watch a video that's about all of the rappers that claim that they can skateboard? Because I was yes. watching a video of uh, Rich would. the Kid skateboarding earlier, and he was mm. trash. You'd fuck with that house phone. Now he wasn't. He wasn't trash. He was trash. Some trash. Yeah. He, did you see that video I where saw he one video and he was bad? I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't. No, listen. Too I've, I've seen some pretty decent footage of him. Too. Listen, yeah. Go, go, okay. go, go on YouTube right now. When you, after you get off the phone, there was this yeah. kid calling him out in the in his comments on Instagram. So him and Vice. 
uh, uh, he was like in LA. He was like, meet me at the Venice Skate Park, 11 a.m. Wasn't there a documentary? Yeah, like, it was like Vice it was like a whole yeah. Vice thing of 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 him playing skate against his kid. It was hella fire. Oh shit! Well, tell you what, I'm gonna put that high up on the list, and when I do that, or when I do the skateboard piece story, I'm gonna hit you guys up. You can send me a clip, and you Let's can go. like. We'll slot a clip in there and you can roast some fucking skateboard tricks or something. Oh, I love that idea. Yo, um, do you ever think about or, or do you ever have issues with the Utes out there in the UK the sort of, uh, you know, sort of showing you an undue amount of attention? Maybe they uh, they don't appreciate you not covering them and they're threatening you in the DMs. Anything weird like that ever? I get a little bit of that. I've got, I have get a lot more stuff recently of people just saying, bro, do a UK story. Obviously, like UK drills a big thing mm. here at the moment. And uh, I've done like, I've done a handful of UK drill, UK type things, you know, every now and then. But uh, yeah, I, I get asked it a lot. And I've got a couple of UK stories on the list. But like, my audience is probably like 65% US. Mm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I know that not everyone over there is fucking with the UK stuff. So I'm trying to, I'm just trying to come up with smart ways of like, doing a US, uh, sorry, a UK story, but in a way that like the Americans might be into it. So like this Russ thing, right? It's mainly yeah. a Russ story, but like I'm going to use it as a platform to just kind of like teach people a bit about the UK Russ, like at the end to try mm. and do a bit of cross-cultural uh, exchange. Mm. No, for knows sure. That's sure. a good idea, but... No, I mean, I... Adam, I would... Go ahead. No, go on. Go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say, Adam, I was interested to ask you about how you enjoyed your time in the UK because you interviewed a lot of people and I feel like you picked a really interesting selection of people to interview. Right. You had like some proper legend because you interviewed was it Dizzy Rascal, right? Yeah, that was a fire um, one. Hey, and I just want to, yeah. before I even finish answering this, I just want to ask, have you ever seen yeah. the True Jordy clip of him asking Dizzy Rascal about the stabbing incident? Because I l really. luckily I watched that right before I uh, interviewed him. So I knew not to ask about that because it gets really uncomfortable really quick. And, and True Jordy, I know, uh, definitely regretted the way that that conversation went at that point. Bro, that's actually a fire uh, thing to tell me about because I think in about three, four videos time, I'm going to cover, I'm going to do the breakdown of that story. Oh, wow. I was um, going to ask if you ever did that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's high up on the list. I'm basically, I'm planning on doing it next month. Um, so I'm going to dive into that. Right. Uh, and that's a, fucking, that's a sick piece of media because I haven't, I haven't actually seen that clip, but I'm definitely going to check that out. Oh man, it's so fucking crazy. Yeah, Dizzy. Uh, but when I was out there, yeah, like, I, uh, Cam Girl actually helped us like put together the list, and we had some like people in the UK who were sort of consulting on like who we should interview and stuff. And it was pretty funny because they were trying to slip in their own fucking artists that they managed or whatever, yeah. trying to get us to interview some people that had like no music out and shit like that. But you know, I, I got some fucking epic ones in there, and actually, it's been pretty amazing seeing H fucking explode ever right. since then. Ooh. He's killing him, man. He's dope as well. Like you don't when know I first H? saw him when he when he first came out, I was like, ah, I don't know, don't know about this guy. But he he's been consistent, man. He's definitely here to say. Dude, they love him. He's this fucking white kid from the yeah. UK. He's fucking always wearing a tracksuit and he's he's super, super good and he's hella funny, like great personality. He's definitely mm -hmm. like Put me on. I'll I'll go check it out. Yeah, he's got a lot of good shit out there. Yeah. Everybody it's should go listen to H. Mm. It's that northern accent. It's just like it's just different enough. People just haven't quite seen it done like that with that accent. So I think yeah. as a you add it all together, it works. But um, you had some fucking good drill ones. You had a mm. you had unknown T like just before he got his charge, right? which he which beat, is which is amazing. Yeah, I can't man. believe that. I like when what was he, it? He he basically unknown T is this UK rapper, and I interviewed him, and he was very much like you know not trying to talk too much about any sort of street stuff, which is one thing that like mm. every UK rapper because the cops are just on them so hard. Everybody yeah. is super paranoid about uh, saying anything that might implicate them in any kind of shit. Yeah. So. So, but so I asked him about like a little bit about street stuff. He didn't say shit. He gets arrested like a month later for fucking killing somebody outside Damn. a party on New Year's Eve or some shit like, and not shooting them, stabbing them like a million times in the stomach. And then it comes out like six months later that he beat the case and that somebody yeah. else did it. And I mean, it's it's so crazy because when somebody gets accused like that, it's it's kind of hard to not like fully yeah. just imagine them doing it and mm -hmm. think about it as if it happened. Yeah. And then when you find out it didn't happen, you're like, oh. Like, oh shit, God okay. damn. you're yeah. a, a normal there person. Was, there was some uh, some crazy fact as well that like in the police report, something like when they went to arrest him the, the morning they picked him up, he said something like, oh, I've been expecting you. He said some really ominous <laughs> shit. It sounded like, oh, he's definitely going to lose this case. But he beat it, man. Fucking fair play to him. Hey, that's amazing. Yeah. Shout out um, to bro. 
Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, some proper interesting UK shit, man. I thought it was a, a dope selection that you that you picked out. I thought it was definitely a, a good selection of someone that knows like where it's where the things are going mm. in in the UK because the scene has been growing fast. Definitely. Uh, actually, Fredo uh, hit me up recently. Sick. Fredo, Fredo is how they Fredo. pronounce it out there to differentiate yeah, him from man. from Fredo Santana. Um, but yeah, that's all right, P. And he's he's all of a sudden been making some moves, making a splash, basically commentating mm -hmm. on uh, you know sort of New York stealing the UK steez, which is pretty funny because it's like so obvious. Uh, New York stealing the UK steez was so funny because obviously the UK was like cribbing drill music from Chicago. Chicago. But I mean, he does have a point with a lot of the U the Brooklyn stuff is like clearly just. I mean, they're using UK producers. They're rapping like UK yeah. rappers. It's it's kind of out of control. But uh, actually, he's somebody that we should probably do a fucking interview like this with on Zoom. Yeah. Mm. Defo, bro. Defo. Yeah, he's sick. He's sick, and he's mm. been. Uh, you know, what I mean, as far as like, it's so hard for UK people to like break through and get some attention in the US. And like, he's been going hard in the UK for a long time. So. Mm. You know, I, I still, I still am not sure whether anyone from our country is going to like really break it over there anytime soon. But like, he's making waves, so yeah, definitely speak to him. He's he's dope. He got a mm. uh, that was a good story. He got arrested not that long ago. He was riding around London with oh, like yeah. 50, fifty racks strapped into his Range Rover, and then they fucking pulled Fire. him over and took it off him. Which is you don't, hell. You don't think uh, you don't think Skepta kind of broke the mold a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, Skepta kind of has. Skepta kind of has a little, but still, it's like. It's not, it only it's went amazing. so far, you know? It's that, that song he did with ASAP Rocky is probably the best push that we've had. Mm. I mean, that, that went platinum. That, that did like 150 mil views on YouTube or, or something like that. The, so the, 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 the recent one, the like, I came, I saw that one yeah. or like, okay. Yeah, that one, I, that one. I didn't know that shit even was that popular. That's crazy. Yeah, that was popping. I mean, it, I, maybe maybe I was overstating some of those numbers a little. No, bit, no, I, no, no. But I think you're right because I just saw something about that. Um, like I watched some fucking weird ASAP Rocky shit, and yeah, they were, they were saying mm. that that was a hit. No, but I, was, I mean that that is a very very big question. Is like when will America be able to get over ourselves enough that we could appreciate a, a well, UK rapper? Actually, Kid Leroy is blowing up, and he's from even further away. I was about to say, bro, our the biggest rapper is Drake. He's not American. Very true. He's Canadian as fuck. Mm. Canadian is like American light. You know what I mean? I feel you. American. I feel you. And it's not. It's not like Drake is like Trailer Park Boys Canadian. He you know? almost <laughs> is. It's like he, he very much like reads us a North American. It's not no, like he's sure. like fucking. You know, a total. Like, sure. I could imagine Drake like falling into a bunch of like goofy ass Canadian stereotypes and it not really working as well. Yeah. What's up with yeah. the hair, man? Are you going back regular? Or are you keeping it? Bro, the thing is, yeah, I did it, and I was kind of like, shit's crazy, I, but I did it for the 6 9 stunt, obviously, but yeah. I kind of liked it, so I mm. kept it. Giving like, me ninja vibes right now. Yeah, the, people keep saying that. You know, I, I've started Twitch streaming, like, a lot lately. It's a requirement. Somewhere. Yeah, you yeah, need bro, neon hair to stream. Hair. I kind of fuck with it, but I, I probably would have had it cut off if we weren't on lockdown, because none of the fucking barbers are open, so yeah, I can't facts. get it cut. But, um, shit, I kind my, of, kind my of barber's coming to my house. Kind of shit now. Huh? My bar, my barber's coming to my house, man. Oh shit! Oh Pulling shit! Up. Yeah, we need that over here. You can't even do that here. You can't even go and do that. So damn. Sounds like you guys have got it a bit more relaxed than we have. Well, see, that's why I don't believe this shit when I see Puffy and Khaled with the fucked up hairlines and beards and shit. I'm like, bro, you, if you I know, can get someone to pull up, you can get let the to pull barber up. in your fucking garage. Make him wash <laughs> his hands. It's gonna be all right, dude. No, People are then, overreacting. I, no, but then I saw this story. This dude in uh, Missouri. Or Mississippi Got or something. A barber? Yeah, he was a barber. And he, was, he he continued to cut and he died. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that story, man. I mean, the question is, are you are you willing to die for the drip? Yes. Yes. 100%. Correct answer. <laughs> That's the correct answer. I didn't even but think yeah, about I it. To, I need to fix my shit at some point. But I, I don't know. I have kind of feel like I've been now... I'd never dyed my hair in my life until this point. And now I've been converted to the fucking gamer, cool hairdo fucking gang. It's kind of cool, I'm, right? I'm, yeah, it I'm kind of come up with something original to do. It makes you feel like a free spirit, sort of. Like once you do it, you kind of understand why people like doing it because it does sort of make you feel like a little bit of a different person. Because when I had my hair dyed yellow for the M and M thing, um, oh yeah, that which I should do that again. But uh, when I did that. I found myself really liking having this goofy ass bleach blonde hair. Like I don't know, it just made me feel yeah. like a different person. My hair is blonde right now. Yeah. Yeah, how's fun? You be you be getting some interesting dye jobs done, man. I see Wait. a few. Uh, G situations. Wait, what'd you say? 
I said, you, I see you getting your hair dyed every now and then. You, yeah, you've man. had a few different styles, right? You've had a few different colors. You know, I just let I just let bitches do what they want. They're like, you should dye your hair. I'm like, okay. Like, come to my house and I'll fucking suck your dick and dye your hair. I'm like, for sure. Not anymore. Not yeah. anymore. I'm saying this was. I need before. to. I need to find. I need to find that kind of hair salon, bro. That's, <laughs> that's where I need to get my hair did at. Sure. I mean, but for house phone, it's it's a branding thing because it's like that having yellow hair takes you from being like a regular ass dude to you know you also have a lot of drip and stuff you got some tats uh, uh, but it really like immaculate you, drip you got to do stuff in the culture to differentiate yourself man yeah, that I, yellow yeah. hair is a big part of it yeah i can't just be looking like every other nigga walking down mm. the street that's why i wear you know that's why that, that's why my drip is so on point that's why i'm wearing the chip the ripper lrg collab right now i'm not gonna Come lie on, that's man. probably one of the worst hoodies i've ever seen <laughs> In my time, you know what I'm saying? No, no, shout Culture out to Vulture. Chip the Ripper though, and shout out to LRG. But if y'all need someone to design some shit, Lifted Research Group. Speaking of 420, were, did, were you were you blazing it up in the crib? I wasn't. I wasn't. Unfortunately, oh, I'm, uh, I'm, currently, I'm currently staying with my parents uh, on a lockdown thing. So uh, I it's thought not really. It's, I was like, I really like that in the streets. This bed frame behind you looked very fancy, and I was gonna ask you, is this your crib? Oh, uh, uh, okay. What's but, the Traplor Ross spliff? <laughs> what's your spliff rolling situation like? You any good? I'm all right, man. I'm all right. I got some. I got some techers, bro. I got some techniques. But uh, some techies. Techies. like I say, like right, right now, I'm not really in a situation to be mm. uh, indulging because it's very, very wholesome. Those are the uh, only yeah. kind of lads I like. Those the ones who roll good spliffs. You got to tell oh, your parents, on. like, man, come on, dude. It's it's lockdown, mom. <laughs> Bro, I gotta, the thing is, yeah. <laughs> I gotta thing smoke is, yeah, in, the, <laughs> in the UK, in the UK, like the attitudes are a lot more uh, mm. fucking old school, you know, about that mm. kind of stuff. As you can't go as, out like, in the backyard or something. Uh, we haven't got backyard, man. It's a pretty small. It's kind of a small mm. apartment that we're in, so it's not even. It's not even popping like that. I'm, well, I'm, hit, I'm out here poor the, shaming. I'm, I'm fucking hit the front dude, porch, man. People don't have a backyard. Yeah, I'm. I'm finna, I hit the I'm stoop. Finna, I'm, I'm finna get something popping on on a little late night walk or something sometime. Exactly, something like that. But get yeah, your bro, mind right. <laughs> get your mind right. <laughs> I sure, smoke, bro. That, that, I'm not gonna lie. That that's definitely one of the major L's of lockdown. I'm not gonna lie. Damn. You don't got no L's, so you bro. taking L's. Small L's. Small Mo L's. Hey, in uh, absence of L's. Most most of the Englishmen I know uh, dabble in the cocaine and the ketamine too. You a fan of that? What? What? Nah, man. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. Oh, okay. uh, I'm. I'm I'm an all-natural boy. Oh, that's I good. That. That's good. Yeah. Also, her Coke in the UK was really expensive and really hard to find. Not hard to find, yeah, but really well, expensive and really trash. I got a lot of friends that, that indulge, and uh, that's what I hear. It's fucking, yeah, pricey and bad. Mm. But it's, it's not really my wave. I don't even drink, man. I knew some dudes in Liverpool, and anytime, well, actually, I never even went to their apartment, but I heard that, like, every time you would go there, there would be a big-ass pile of Coke and a big-ass pile of ketamine, and everybody would just be walking up and just mixing it up and just, <laughs> I never, yeah, I never that, went, though. That sounds terrible. That's that northern, that's that northern hospitality, bro. Mm, I've heard that a lot. That sounds like a terrible mm -hmm. time, honestly. Oh, that just made me nauseous. You should look into this so guy, uh, Ben Hennen. Ben Hennen is this legendary BMX rider who is also one of the most savage partiers alive. And mm. I just want to throw Man. his name out there. People should look into him. So, um, what's that no jumper weed saying, Adam? What's the mm. what, what's the uh, the situation with that? I mean, yeah. I feel like that's a good business to get into. Def now. Definitely, but we had some hiccups in terms of our distribution status. But we're going to be coming back strong very, very soon with with new loud. Louder, loud. Interesting, bro. I was uh, I was in LA um, last year before all this shit went down. Because I was, yeah, I was gonna, I was even gonna link up uh, with you guys. But um, the situation you guys have got going on out there is fucking crazy. The whole legal shit. It's like mm. they've got weed billboards for a, for a humble oh, yeah. Brit. For a humble Brit, that shit is crazy. Because mm. like we're fucking twenty years behind on that stuff. Mm -hmm. I wonder how long it's gonna take for that to sort of catch on out there. Or any, or the, anywhere else. The queen's not having it, I doubt. Yeah, bro, it's gonna take so long, man. It's gonna take so long. We need to. The the queen needs to die. <laughs> some shit. Like, Don't you know say what? that. It's, queen it's needs time to for die. some new shit, bro. The queen, the queen's unkillable. What's that oh, mean? Yeah. Oh, 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 I thought you said she's on killable. I was like, what is that? What's killable? Oh, yeah, I know. I thought you were talking about some drug called killable yeah, for a I second. Like, <laughs> I was like, what's this new drug called killable? That's the new shit. That's the new shit. The killable. Ironically, it makes you unkillable. Hey, when, exactly. when you heard Boris got the coronavirus, were you rooting for the virus or for him? 
bro. So it was so sad because it was like that shit happened, and then it was like, oh, it's, we can't make fun of Boris. Who's but Boris? once he recovered, it was like, well, it's a W that you know we can make fun of him again, but it's a bit of an L. Yeah, but, I mean, it's kind of weird because like on one hand, you don't want your leader to die no matter how shitty they are, but then on the other hand, like. You know, I think if Donald Trump died, a lot of people wouldn't care. Oh, a lot of people would not care. They wouldn't yeah. give a fuck. But at the same time, like the president dying, that can't be good for everything overall, right? But I mean, mm. I think a lot of people would. I mean, Mike Pence being the the president. Yeah, that doesn't sound. So I mean, good, I'll be yeah. honest with you. I got a lot more faith in Mike Pence than Donald Trump. But yeah, I feel you. Mm. But Mike, Mike Pence is the one calling the shots anyway, right? Facts. I doubt it. Trump I think is he's just a face. In a hole. Trump he's, is a face, man. He doesn't. He doesn't call it anything. Mike Pence is just trying to leave this this four year term with his fucking dignity intact. As long as we don't have Joe Biden soiling fucking, his reputation as long too as we, bad. Can, can you make a video about Joe Biden <laughs> fucking <laughs> fucking like being a creep and whispering yeah, into no, young girls' ears? Find every time that Joe Biden inter or uh, Joe excuse Biden. me Joe Biden interacted <laughs> Joe Biden. with the woman any time he interacted with hip hop in any way, and boom, there's your video. I need to find a picture. I need to doctor some pictures of like Joe Biden and Drake and like Jeffrey Epstein hanging out together <laughs> on, on Drake's plane. They're all hanging out together on the Drizzy hey, plane. you're the fucking the hilarious. Express. Oh my on the, God. On the, <laughs> on the off-white plane. <laughs> oh, an off-white plane. No, That's what they got to be on. That, that off-white plane sus as fuck because he's only painted that as cloud so that so that people can't see him flying in the air with all those young chicks on it. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Hey, this is Drake, like... We, we do not go sign this. Hey, this is crazy because it's like I'm watching your video but we're talking to you. It's like free, I'm high as shit. I don't know. Bro, it's, it's weird. It feels I'm like I'm watching, watching the video watching. but I'm talking to this nigga. Bro, I get, I get weirded out because like my videos, like I plan, obviously I script them and I plan out what I'm going to say and I have yeah. time to like pre prepare my carefully crafted jokes calling out Drake for being mm. a fucking creep. But then I, I, I think like if I'm put on the spot in a situation like this, I don't know. I feel like it's you just freestyled out a theory. great joke right yeah, now. Freestyled well, that, pretty good. <laughs> that was a, that was a ten out of ten <laughs> joke. Hey, what? <laughs> I, I just want to raise awareness of this. This. What happened to Lael Hansen? Lael Hansen. She disappeared. She she fucking she got like a million subscribers, and then all of a sudden her Instagram goes dark, and she hasn't posted a video in like wait wait four was months. that the one with the that the one that was like X told me yes. That one. She was from the UK too, right? I don't know what happened. Like no. some, some. Oh no, she's a Canadian, I believe. But she was hot though. She was. She looked all right. She I'm had down. the workout videos. I was down. But now she's bro, gone. I, disappeared. I don't know what happened. Adam, I, I was going to ask your advice, bro, because you, you're like you're like king of the of the bad chicks. What's <laughs> a, what's a what's a rainbow haired little simp like me got to do to uh, get my game up on on to, with this clout? Oh wow, I don't know. The, you got to find the girls doing the OnlyFans out there. I, you want me to put you in touch mm -hmm. with Riley Reed? I feel like she might she might be down to wife you up. She might fuck with me. I think I'm so. Down, bro. Yeah. I'm down. Now you got you you got to you got to like put some pop in like UK chick on and like. Yeah, just mm. run it up, man. If you dated Riley Reed, that'd be huge for your uh, for your channel. I think the subs would go crazy. Yeah, that actually would yeah. be great. You should I'm do it, bro. You should do a deep dive into her song. Oh my bro, god! I'll, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, I'll be like the best toe blunt smoker in the game. Yeah. The oh expert yeah. Bay. There you go. That was her, right? That was her smoking the blunt out of Lil Pump's toes, right? Was that her? Yeah. An another innovation, right there. That was huge. There we go. That, that, was, was, that, was next, that was next level. You know you're rich when instead of a when instead of a roach clip, you got a Riley Reed. I know, and she was loving it too. I think I saw her smoking a blunt out of her asshole in the club one time. That's fire. <laughs> I wonder if it hit her. Huh? I wonder if it like like did she actually get high? I don't know. I think yeah. it was a blunt in her that's ass. Best, though. That's the best way to smoke. That's the only way we smoke in the UK. <laughs> Out the asshole. <laughs> that's all we do. I didn't the know there was another way of doing it. The cops leave you alone. Are you a are you a rabid Top Boy fan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. I love Top Boy, man. Shit was mm. fire. Unbelievable, right? Oh yeah, super. I got. I actually want to rewatch it before season three drops. Okay, I was about to say. I, I spoke to like some American friends that had seen it, and they didn't realize there were two seasons before the mm -hmm. big season that Drake was involved in. Yeah. So it sounds like you've seen those seasons. So that's lit. Oh yeah, yeah. I've seen it all. Yeah, Throwback, yeah. man. The old ones are fucking sick. The old too, ones though, are yeah. way better, honestly. Yeah. Yeah, man, because it's not got those drizzy fingerprints all over it. <laughs> in it, they, they 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 say in it so much in the in dialogue it. and like in sort of like an awkward way that is not really how people use it in real life. 
Yeah, the thing with that show is like some of the dialogue, it's just like a little bit, it's either like outdated slang or it's just like overuse mm. of a few key words. The fact that they sh- they say food for drugs in that show so much. Oh, well, I, love, I love I love that. You got the food. I love that people though. People don't say that anymore. People ain't said that in like 10 years, I swear. Nah, but see, but people out here say like, if, you, if you're buying heroin out here, that's dog food. Dog food, so, yeah, yeah. But they're, they're, for them, like, it's food just food as in, like, this is what's feeding us, you know? Like, oh, that's like if you're going to buy a brick, yeah. it's like, oh, I'm going to get the food. Oh, that's whack. I'm sorry. That is yeah, I'm not into that either. I thought, the they meant, I thought they meant, like, I got a brick of this black tar heroin for you, and that's why we call uh-huh. it the food. We need to have a talk. We need an intervention. <laughs> You're, you're thinking about heroin. You can't even go two seconds without it. How's fun? We need an intervention. I think he's off the dog food again. <laughs> What's more respectable, a rapper that sells dog food or a rapper that sells crack? Um, Like respectable in the game. Crack, crack is a little outdated, I feel like. There's not a lot of crack yeah. going around. Yeah, I, feel like, I feel like being a heroin dealer is more dangerous nowadays. Mm. Because like a crackhead is kind of like feeble and like kind of you know uh, fragile. Like the, thing with the, the thing with the crack game is they haven't really innovated since the eighties. Exactly. Whereas like now with the with the dog food game, they're innovating. You got you got the the fentanyl, you got the China White, you got the little the little technological advances. You know what I mean? Mm. So I wonder if there's anything to come after fentanyl. Like is there like a like is a, there a crazier a drug super that... fentanyl? That'd be fucking terrifying. <laughs> And because no, fentanyl is the super drug because it can yeah. be laced into anything. So it's like you could like have some fake Zans that have fentanyl in it. You could have some f- fucking coke that has fentanyl in it. You could have heroin that has fentanyl in it. You're like, drinking fentanyl lean, I heard. Bro, bro, I heard that that niggas are making a fake Cairo juice where it's like they cut the lean with like their own like medicinal Whoa. syrup shit. Like they like, it might be some fentanyl, some crushed up fucking Advil and some high fructose corn syrup. And then they cut that into the lean. I'm giving too much sauce that, right now. I got to drink. Someone, the, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I, I got to drink this deuce I got in my fridge before I have my baby. Oh shit, bro! I, congratulations, I, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I but I haven't. I, you know, I've had it sitting there in the fridge. <laughs> it's been sitting in the fridge for like six months. Oh, and about having a deuce, yeah. No, but it I, might be. It might be bad by now. No, it not ah. bad. It does go bad eventually. Not bro, in like so, a couple months. So, so, how are you feeling about about the the impending baby life, man? That shit's exciting. That's a new chapter. I'm ready. I'm ready to do some parenting. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's throw a ball. I think you should wait until the first day where the baby is born and then pour the dues. I want to be like a helpful (laughs) member of the family. So that's the (laughs) thing about me when I drink lean is. Or maybe save it until the kid is like, like kids like first birthday. You could put some on pacifier. Uh, <laughs> you're gonna get child protective mm-hmm. services called. I mean, the kid ain't even out yet. Kid don't even drop for like your, six months. Your kid's gonna be born with so much clout, bro. That's a blessed, <laughs> blessed child. That's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> Imagine the day that we have to explain to the kid, like, hey, there's millions of people who give a shit about you. I know you're, I know you're four. I know you ain't done anything in your life yet. But there's all these people, and they're all obsessed with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh man. I feel like your kid's gonna come out with face tats. Uh, I don't know. Do We're probably like gonna wait till. People are gonna run up to you and say even weirder shit when you're with Lena and the kid, like at the grocery store. Uh, you know, I was thinking is that as much as I feel like I don't need a security guard right now, I feel like the kid makes it seem a little bit more important. Hmm. Yeah, for sure, bro. What do you think people are gonna sure. like? Well, just gonna. But run it's up not and like why? Something. Like, how often is the kid gonna be leaving the house? Kid don't need to leave the house all the time, so you know. What, if, what if you just want to fucking go on a walk with you know? Ah, if I need to go on a walk, I can. I feel like I can walk in my neighborhood without. If I if I need a security guard to walk in my neighborhood where I probably won't see one other human being, that would be pretty bad. Mm. Do you do you get? I mean, obviously, like you're fucking mad famous, and I I've seen clips of you walking around where people are like, "What up, Adam?" Mm. Um, this is this is quite a new thing for me because I've been recognized a few times. Like, how 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 do you guys? fucking deal with shit like this because i find it really weird 
Man, I just, uh, you know, you try to, try to keep a positive outlook on it for myself for the most part. Like, even mm. the other day I was at this park, this public park playing uh, Pokemon Go. This fucking crackhead runs up on me. He got, like, a little ass, like, fucking, he got a little line of lean on him. He got a little tiny ass <laughs> red bottle. He's trying to give me some weed. He's trying to, t like, rap to me and shit. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. I was just like, bro. After a little bit, I'm like, yo, you got to chill. He's like, he's like. <laughs> Oh, oh my, my bad, man. Like, sometimes I feel like people deal pretty well when you're, like, reasonable yeah. with them, but... I mean, yeah, you know. maybe in the moment, and then he's, like, fucking goes back home, like, yo, fuck Adam-22. But I really don't give a fuck if he's going to go say fuck Adam-22. Like, I don't really... As much as my business sort of depends on people yeah. liking me, I really don't care that much about, like, some guy mm -hmm. liking me because I was rude to him when he fucking ran up on me all methed out of the park. Yeah. <laughs> I will always tell this story about how... Yeah. I used to uh, mention this girl's name on the podcast all the time, right? And then I stopped talking to that girl and I started dating another girl, like kind of in the same time frame. And I was out at the uh, at a show and this guy comes up to me. He's like, ho, ho, like, yo, house phone, where's Liz at? And I'm like, I'm like, obviously, like not with that girl. I'm with a whole another girl. And my girlfriend was so pissed at the time. My ex, she was oh, really bro. pissed. So, yeah, it's kind of weird, man. Some random dude as well that came in and fucked your shit up. Just bro, I think we argued about this for like two. Like, she oh. she she would bring this up like for almost like a year after, you know. Jesus. Yeah. This is the thing I'm. This is the thing I'm scared of. Is just like because generally it's not happened that much to me so far, and it's always been super super nice people. Yeah, exactly. Supporters, but like. Yeah, the the, it'll be the ops, man. The ops are lurking out there, you know? Yeah, I mean, hey, it's not too late. You might want to go full M. Huncho and just be become a mask guy. Ooh, that's a good shot. It's too, many old vi it's too many videos of you with your face out now, though. They, we already know. Yeah, nah, bro. fuck it. He'll, he'll change. Get plastic surgery. We'll never know. Bro, are you going to get Blackie Speaks on your show to do a face reveal? Oh, my wow, God. Imagine he fire. gave me the face reveal. He would never. He's got to do it on his channel. He wants the views. He should do it with you because I feel like it would just be an iconic moment. That would. Uh, but, and I, has, but, he, has Hello yeah. Yassin showed his face? Oh, I don't think he has, you know. We what need you both about of Hello Yassin? I fuck, with, I fuck with his videos too. He's fucking funny as hell. Yeah, he's, I, I, no, go on. He's a little crazier though. Like he'll fucking, he'll just be like, this fucking stupid thought, bitch, whore, worthless <laughs> slut. Like he's fucking crazy. <laughs> His videos yeah, are fire. He'd be wilding out sometimes, man. He'd be wilding out sometimes. For sure, for sure. Mm. But yeah, bro. Uh, yeah, we're about to do a uh, another interview. We got Bravo the Bag Chaser coming through in case you want to go uh, check out our, our next artist, our next interview coming out. He's a Shoreline Mafia affiliate. Oh, oh lit. Yeah, bro. Bag Chaser. Boom. I fucks with that. I fucks with that. Yeah, bro. Well, listen, I, I appreciate you guys having me on, man. Like, fucking. Yeah, good chat. Appreciate you being on, man. You guys been showing love for the longest time, man. House phone, you fucking, you've been, you've been putting me on. So I, I gotta say I appreciate that. And Adam, you're showing hella love. So it oh, means, yeah. it means the world to me. If there's ever anything I can do for you guys or any way I can show you guys love, like hit me up because fucking it's all love, bro. For sure. Let's uh, we'll, we'll come hit the pub with you once the quarantine to, is I was, done. I was about to say yeah. once the quarantine's done, I'll hit you when I'm in the UK, bro. Go have a couple pints, bro. I'll be flying out to LA as soon as I can because I miss it over there, bro. I'm hey. I need some I need some UK uh Unit. some UK ketamine though, so I'm gonna come oh, over yeah. there first. UK ketamine, let us know. <laughs> the lowest quality in the world, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hey yo, if you need if you need me to ship a pack to your parents' house, you know, get in my DMs, man. Mm. Yeah, I, might, I like I that. To, I have to little hit you up with a little sh you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's become drug traffickers. Why not? Uh <laughs> Trap Lord Ross, we appreciate it, man. Everybody go subscribe. Make sure you go subscribe and follow hey, him hey. on Instagram too, man, because Instagram is not popping. We, we gotta get my yeah, man to right. road man to ten K. We gotta yeah. get him ten K at least so he can do a swipe. 10 -K. Up. <laughs> I need I need all of Adam's Adam's girls and Adam and House Phone's girls in my DMs, bro. Adam's I got no up, girls baby. right now because I'm wiped up. Yeah, so. everybody go comment on Riley Reed's Instagram say check out Trap Lord Ross he's got he's got rare clouded out dick and at you Trap in your Lord T-R-A-P-L-O-R-E Ross R-O-S-S -S. the thing is is if they made it this deep into the podcast they definitely, they definitely know, know a lot about is. him yeah. but if Probably we had crazy. said all this earlier maybe it would have made more of an impression well we're gonna, we're gonna put his uh, his Instagram at in the description there we facts, go facts facts hey, give me that clout baby there need it that. is all Trap right, Lord man. Ross no jumper guys Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Zoom, apparently.
Are we live? Were this live? Nah. Oh, okay. Like, comment, subscribe. Nojumper.com. If you want to support Trap Little Ross, go subscribe. Go get yourself a Kadama. Boom! Another classic interview in the books. If you guys enjoyed this, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and head on over to Nojumper.com to support. Appreciate y'all.